for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another full breakdown video for you guys. If you guys don't know, I try to do this every single month, give you guys a full breakdown. These are basically uh, videos based off of the ebooks that I put out that I'm always plugging. I'm saying links in the description below and all that stuff. Uh, I've already done one a month for, you know, every month uh, since the game came out. So I know I've done the Niners, the Patriots. Um, you know, maybe next month I'll do the Raiders. I know that's a really popular book. Which brings me to my next point. Uh, whatever playbook you guys would like to see me do next, let me know in the comment section uh, but most importantly I'm putting out this playbook because I'm trying to retire the Ravens it's without a doubt my favorite playbook I love this playbook but I feel like you guys are getting tired of it so let me know in the comment section what new playbook you guys like me to focus on I did a little poll uh, on my uh, on my join out community tab the Raiders won but to be honest with you I've done so much rare stuff that didn't really excite me I was really thinking Bills I see a lot of people said Patriots so let me know in the comment section of what playbook you guys let, would like me to make my new playbook going forward uh because i'm really looking to retire the ravens so other than that if you guys want me to do videos like this again in the future hit the like button let me know in the comment section and that's it let's get right into the video next up we got the bench pivot against cover three just put the rb route on a streak and he's gonna have a very big play against cover three now this is a tight end right now but typically you can put your fastest receiver there i just have my third receiver as my tight end uh, this could be an easy one by touchdown if you really want to spread the defense you can put the running back out and put him on a streak of some kind just to keep that safety over as much as possible and now you can see you can have a very big play up the seam because he does get past the cornerback so a very easy one play touchdown against cover three and you're really gonna have success against any man or zone with the a route as well you can see he's not really covered either so cover two cover three he'll get outside cover four also and the B route is a really good man-beating route. Although you can see here, he's also gonna have success getting outside of the cover three. So it's a very hard play to stop. I'm gonna run this against a man coverage a couple times. Like I said, very easy play, just bullet, pass it outside. You can steal that all game. Next up with the SE, clear, the clear out SE, the clear out SE out. It's another one play touchdown against cover three in old gen. Just motion this guy in, put him on a streak, block the running back slide my protection towards the left i'll even go as far as to double team this defensive end here um, but that's pretty much it and you also give yourself a check down with a with, a, with an rb route uh, but ultimately this x route here once he crosses 35 yards you can pass lead and you can get a one play touchdown against cover three before 35 yards he will not you will not be able to pass lead so just keep that in mind you have to run it from the hash mark and you have to motion this guy in all these things are important but like i said if i throw it too early the pass lead's not there and you just basically throw it right into coverage or maybe even interception you're also watching for this cornerback to bite on the crossing route like I said, I'll go as far as to double team this guy because I want to roll in that direction. So we'll go as far as to watch. We set 35 yards, throw it up. That cornerback reacts. I mean, I don't even have my fastest receiver out there. I got a pretty good receiver, but I don't have my fastest receiver. That cornerback, as we'll go to the replay, reacts to the crossing route. Once he once he does that, you still, you still have to wait for he passes 35 yards, which I think is right about here. But once he does that, then you can bomb it up for a one-play touchdown. Next up, we got the corner strike. Against cover two, pretty much any zone, if you streak the RB route, the B route will typically get open, but against cover two, it's gonna be especially, you know, open. But pretty much any zone will have that effect. The table route's a good play against cover three on the left side, cover three and cover four, as typically the cornerback will pull back so far that he won't be in play. But you get an easy one play touchdown just by streaking the RB route and motioning out the B route. That's all you really have to do. It's best run from a hash mark, but you can see we're going to have a lot of success even without doing that as he gets right up the seam there. If I run from a hash mark, I'll probably have a wide open one play touchdown. So I'm going to do that real quick. Run from the hash mark to the open side of the field, and you'll have a lot more success. So we'll do that one more time. And that RB route there, as long as I throw it before that safety has a chance to react, that should be gone, but he's coming over and keeping me from scoring a touchdown. But still, easily won't, won't play touchdown. I'm going to put him on a fade this time, see if that really 
makes a difference. I said, I'll help him get out there a little bit further. And I want to switch touch down. Maybe the Verne is just not fast enough. As you can see, he's almost getting going. Next up, we have the flanker drive. Same setup as the previous play block, the tight ends. Drag the RB route, put the X route or the B route on a flat. And this uh, X route here will get past that safety one more time. It's pretty much the exact same concept as uh, the previous play. Next up, we have the mesh spot. Just put the B route on a streak. That's all you really have to do. And you're going to get an easy one play touchdown over the top against cover three. As you can see right there, the uh, cornerback just basically turns around. Uh, because he's more concerned with the uh, the wheel route coming underneath him. Next up, we have the Ravens Trail. This play is really just a bunch of good uh, man-beating routes, including the B route. This is a cover two man, and you can see it still gets inside release. So any man covers these uh, three routes in the bunch of success, including the X route. The X routes are a really good man-beating route as well. So this entire play is a man-beating play. Let's hit the, like I said, the RB route, the A route. Pretty much everything's going to be open. It doesn't really matter. If it's a cover one robber, though, you will have to watch out throwing over the middle. Next up, we have the verticals. Against cover three, especially an old gen, just motion this guy out will get the, uh, the A route open right up the seam. But you can also get a one-play touchdown, which is obviously a much bigger play on next gen. Put the B route on a streak. That's all you really have to do. And he will get right over the top while that receiver there waits for a uh, you know the tight end to come underneath. So it's just a really easy play. It's in most playbooks. Also finds best you put this X route, block it right back, put the X route on a drag and motion him in a lot of times. Give yourself a really good check down also. Next up we have the Z spot. All you really have to do is streak the B route. That's pretty much it. The RB route here is going to be the play against just about any zone coverage. As you can see, he just gets wide open as those uh, safe as the safety gets spread too far apart from the uh, the cornerback. That's really all you have to do. Against cover three, it'll have similar success, but you could also bomb it up for a one-play touchdown. It's going to motion over the running back here, put him into a streak. Uh, you won't have a ton of coverage, but that'll keep the safety away. And then the B route here can have a lot of success right over the top. As you can see, we almost have a one-play touchdown. I'll say it's a one-play touchdown about a little bit more speed. It probably would have been gone. But that's a really easy read. You just have to run it from the hash mark. Next up, we got the 0-1 trap. It's a good inside run play. It's going to be best um, if you have spread gap-based alignment. Anything that's too tight won't have success, but when it's spread like this, a lot of times it'll, they'll just create, they'll expand those gaps with the blocking scheme. So if it's tight, not so much. Right here, if there's no one covering the center, I typically find it has a lot of success as well. Like cover three, like three fours will have more success stopping this than something like a four three because there's not typically somebody covering the center. But ultimately, it's all based off alignment. Next up, we have the bench swap. The running back is going to be best against cover three and cover four. It's just a really good catch and run check down. If you have a fast enough running back, sometimes it'll even be man coverage. But ultimately, um, your best play is going to be on the left side. Here we have a man coverage. You're going to see that both these receivers should get open against that as well against zone. I would say the best setup, though, would be to put that Y route on the street, put the A route on a drag. Uh, and this is going to be it. Or the B route on the drag and put the A route on a pass block. Just give yourself a little bit more pass pro. But this setup here should be just about any man or zone. As you can see here, we probably had a cover two. And we would have had a touchdown if I didn't run out of bounds. But that route will get open against pretty much any zone coverage. So we're going to do that one more time. So we'll just attack one side of the field. Although we can attack both. And you can see here, once again, cover three, exact same result. Cover four be exact same result. Next up, we got the corner and goes. These outside routes here, well, pretty much every route here is going to be a man coverage beating route. I mean, all these routes are really good um, check downs, but the deep routes will beat cover zero and cover one man. Against cover one man, you have to smart route them for them to have success. And I also find it's best to motion one out and put them on a smart route like this. Keep one on a... Um, I mean, you can smart route them both, but if you keep one on a smart route and leave the other one as is, uh, you would have a play that beats both 
man cover zero and man cover one because you have the smart route to beat cover one man. Next up, we got the mesh spot. Against cover two, all I have to do is motion out this route here and put the Y route on a streak. Uh, and I also put the B route on a streak, but this is a really good play here against cover two because this X right here, once he gets past that cornerback, gets forgotten about pretty quick. Now there, the sideline is probably the biggest issue because I got to pass lead away from the safety just to make a safe play. Um, if you run it from the hash mark to the open side of the field, you'll have more opportunities. But I also find that a lot of times um, these safeties do a pretty good job uh, when it comes to uh, covering the larger half. It's not like cover three. They do, they do oh, that's not even a cover three. It was actually a cover four, but you know what? Hey, even a cover four quarters looks like it had some problems against it. So, yeah, I mean, that's another uh, another way you can run this play. I just didn't mean to show that yet, but that was a cover four quarters. So just so you guys see, that's the exact same thing. This here, basically just putting this down a streak, um, the exact same setup. And this X route here just has a lot of success getting past these cornerbacks. Same type of pass, bullet, pass lead outside. It's a one play touchdown against cover four quarters. Now, back to cover two because it's a one play touchdown against cover two also. So let's go and let's do that one more time. And I forgot to put that guy on a drag, but like I said, it doesn't really matter. So you can see we can have success. I don't know what happened there, why he ran out of bounds. <laughs> that was nonsense. I didn't really set the play up correctly anyway. So I, I streaked the wrong guy. The the, the B routes to the guy is just streaked. You can put the running back on a block. He's not really doing anything anyway. And then once again, we have cover for quarters again because I keep forgetting to put it in on cover two. But hey, at least you can see it's consistent. You're consistently getting behind that cover for quarters corner. So let's try that one more time. Let's get the Tampa 2 out there. And like I said, let's streak all the right players. And let's get a one-play touchdown so we can move on. So like I said, there we go. That should give me enough catch and run space, but I went out of bounds again. But you can see how there's an opportunity if you have a little bit more speed for this to be a one-play touchdown against cover uh, cover two. Against cover three, we're going to move the ball back. Against cover three, I'm just going to put the Y route on a streak. Motion this guy out. I'm going to make sure I put it on cover three because I keep forgetting to do that. But here we go. Then I'm going to put the B route on a streak or a fade. It really doesn't matter. And that's going to be the play. All I'm really going to do is wait for him to get past that cornerback. And you can see he just runs right over the top of that cornerback for an easy one-play touchdown against cover three. So we're beating cover three, beating cover four quarters, cover, um, cover two, all one-play touchdowns. Next up, we got the PA deep cross. Go random on defense. This is another play. I'm just going to put the, uh, I, I mean, I really have my choice. I can put the X route here on a, I didn't mean to flip to there by accident, but yeah, I can put the X route here on a streak and then the A route on a drag. And it's pretty much going to be the look. Uh, and then you can see we're pretty much just going high to low between, uh, you know, the three levels, including the other tight end, which comes out in a flat. Now, I should probably put this guy back on the defensive line there we go so like i said this is pretty much the look here you have three levels of passing uh the y route here might be the first one out of the flat and then typically that drag can become a blocker but i don't really have a great second tight end in dwelly so i don't expect to make too many plays there but the a route i'm sorry the x route's the only one i really don't have any plans for as far as anything more than just to pull um you know pull space pull pull the, the zones back and then this b route here obviously is really good against man and zone so you're really just going front to back the A route and the B route are the only man beaters, where the Y route, the A route, the B route are all zone beaters based off of the depths of the zones. Next up, we got the middle high low against um, cover two and cover three. You can motion this guy in, put him on a streak. Go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll pick Tampa two. And you're gonna see that the, uh, the B route can really have a lot of success outside and be a very big play. It can typically be gone. Next up, we got the quarterback draw. If your opponent spreads their defense to try to match these wide uh, running formations, you can basically just hit them with this draw, and it's a pretty good play. You need a mobile quarterback, and there's also a chance of fumbling. So when I run this a lot of times, I will slide, but ultimately this is one of the better uh, run plays that a lot of people won't necessarily expect. So like I said, fumbles happen. I typically try to slide so that I can avoid that. Uh, I even tried to slide there, and it didn't work out. So ultimately be aware of that. But anytime there's a really spread defense with not a lot of linebackers, you can still run this play with success. Next up, we have the strong curl. Run this against random defenses. All I'm going to do is put the X route on the street, motion them in. Whenever it lets me, put the A route on the drag. You can put the RB route and the B route on any number of check downs you want. They're not really critical to the play. But uh, this Y route here, I don't know what defense that was, but it doesn't really matter. Man or zone, it typically has that effect. Not against man as much. The drag would typically be the man read. Go ahead and we'll go with uh, cover three. Just give myself. Uh, something that we can see for you know what the actual zone is instead of guessing after the fact 
but, uh, but yeah, you can see once again, same thing, wide open in the outside because of that drag. Cover two obviously will have that effect. Let's go and let's do that one time. It's going to be the same thing though. Uh, the Y route's going to get open. Although he's getting open a lot easier. He's rounding that route off pretty poorly and it's still wide open. So any man or zone that's going to be successful. Any zone that's going to be successful. Any man's going to be the drag. So let's go and let's just pick the four verticals. Let's start off with that. Uh, we'll start off with cover two. Although, like I said, I run it and it feels like I could just run against random and chuck it around. So let's do that first. Just to show you guys what I'm talking about. I don't even have to read the defense. That's how easy this play is to run. If you really want to run this play like, um, you know, if you're not good at reading defenses, you can really just watch A to, if you just go from front to back, you can watch A to Y to RB to B and just throw it to the first one that you see has a lot of space and you can run it just like that. So if you're not too good at reading defenses, you can do that. As you can see, this perfectly is just, it's just so well spread because of the full wide receivers and there's just not enough defensive players over there. So we're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna run against random defenses. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run it like I said, if I just go front to back, eventually somebody's going to get open. That was probably a cover three. That Y route was just streaking right over the center there. So if you're not good at reading defenses, this is a really good series of plays to run because you don't really have to read the defenses. You can just start at the front and work your way back. Start the A route. If he gets open, take it. It's a very easy catch and run, a very easy drag type play. If that's not open, then you just make your way back to the Y route. If the Y route, I mean, honestly, that's going to be open nine times out of ten. As you can see, he was right there. I probably could have caught him ran that a little bit better, but you can see he's open pretty much every replay too a lot of times i find myself running it like this because it's just so easy to read right here we got that rb route like i said i threw it a little bit uh maybe a little bit on time i, <laughs> I was gonna say i thought i threw a little bit early but i still made it in there as that was probably a cover two the mid read on cover two does a pretty good job of getting uh, up the field when it comes to that particular play and then you can see right here i mean that was i snuck it in there that's right so like i said i mean you can see there's just so much opportunity it spreads so well let's go and let's run it play the play formation to formation though against cover two i've had a lot of success running it just just like this I feel like that that mid read does a pretty good job but if you throw it on timing there's definitely opportunity right at the center of cover two as you can see Devin Duvernay is not even a great receiver and he gets right past it you could also just put this this a route on a streak though you can pull that safety back and then you can basically just hit this B route outside because he's running something that's not really a streak it's kind of like a it's like a fade almost more than a streak if you watch the pattern you can see that he kind of bends to the outside so all you really have to do is just you know pull that safety back wait till he gets past that outside cornerback and then i have a lot of success a lot of throwing over there i got popped but you can see it's still a really big play that's probably the biggest issue uh, you run into is you don't necessarily have a ton of pass protection and when you have a you know superstar like jj watt bearing down on you it makes it a little bit uh, JJ, not JJ, but TJ Watt, when he's bearing down, when he makes it a little bit difficult to get off some of these throws. Uh, but even the A route, I mean, that guy, he's just, he can be open. If you have a fast enough tight end, he's open right over the middle. So cover two, there's a lot of area of opportunity to attack when it comes to just running it as is, or you can run it with, to the A route and to the B route, and you're just going to have success all over the field. Now against cover three, I feel like there's a couple different ways to run this as well. For some reason, the Y route just gets open wide as you go over the middle there. I'm gonna to go to the replay just so I can show that because this is something that just doesn't even make sense to me. If you watch this route right here, the second the play starts, he's just wide open. I mean, and it, it's, he's gotta be like 30 yards to the closest defender just running straight down the middle of the field. Now, a lot of times your opponent might take that away um, that's probably going to be their best move, but if they do, I mean, there's only so many, you know, defenders on the field. If he's taken away, typically this tight end is going to be wide open, so it's really up to them. But for some reason, this thing just gets super wide open the second the play starts. So we're just going to run this a few more times. Like I said, that Y route is just money. He just cuts right in front of the safety every time. That's why you probably want your best receiver there. And if I didn't truck, I probably would have been gone there. That guy just missed me. Um, but like I said, when I run this in gameplay, I don't know if I get a ton of touchdowns here, but when I run this in gameplay, I get a ton of touchdowns, and I just, I'm just i just ripping right down the field. I really, My second favorite play is honestly the QB Blast. Like I said, I've run this play a ton of times. You really want to just, you know, the second your opponent starts really spreading the field, coming out in like dime looks and stuff like that, anything where they come out really small, you just have to be able to switch over and make a pay. So let's go ahead and let's go with random dime. This formation really puts the defense in a tough spot. You really have to make a choice um, you know, when it comes to your defensive selection, try to match the speed on the field. And not a lot of defenses do that. Really only dimes do that. So your opponent's probably going to come out in something like this. When they do that, it's the perfect opportunity to switch over to the QB Blast. The QB Blast is something that I ran like 
14, 15 times in a game with Patrick Mahomes, of all people, who's not very fast. And I still had about 50 yards. They got a touchdown or two. And I also had, um, I think I had two fumbles, which is the downside. So if you're going to run with a quarterback, make sure that they have some mobile capabilities because realistically, and I also slid a lot too, because once I started fumbling, I was like, how much do I really want to do this year? But if they don't respect the run, which typically people won't because they, they have to. They have to choose a defense that has so many defensive backs. You always have these run plays in your back pocket. You always have the quarterback glass in your back pocket. I eventually will get a guy like Lamar Jackson. Like, here, this is probably a look where I don't have to do that. But I could also try to go behind this uh, this right tackle here. And you can see, like, there's just there's so much opportunity. Like I said, I would definitely slide a lot. As you can see right there, I think we fumbled when we got it back. Uh, because I did fumble twice in that gameplay. It didn't cost me. But realistically, you can you can fumble, and it can, it's obviously going to be huge. What I'm going to show is the wide receiver screen. Now, this is going to be something, once again, a little bit of a trick play. You're going to want to use this when your opponent comes out in anything uh, cover three, cover four. Cover four is probably one of the best defenses for this play. So if they come out in that, or like I said, a cover three, which is also one of the uh, you know most popular, most run formations is probably cover three. Then you're gonna wanna hit them with this. So against any off coverage, cover three, cover four, you're just gonna wanna throw it out quick to your, your wide receiver. Try to make sure you have your fastest guy there. I put Brown in that spot. Uh, but without a doubt, this is something that you can definitely, because your opponents, I, one guy I was playing, he was dropping everybody back, uh, you know, as far as he could, because he was just expecting me to bomb it up over and over. That's a perfect opportunity. If they start playing back, just throw it underneath. It's gonna, it's a super frustrating formation. Between this play, the quarterback blast, and obviously the verticals play, um, you can just really, uh, you know, it's almost like rocking a college offense, and it's just going to drive your opponent crazy. Next up, we got the double post. Against cover four, just block the running back and drag. Block the running back to tight end and drag your other receivers. And I typically like to slide my protection as well. As you can see right there, I had to throw the ball a little bit early because I forgot to do that. The, the edge rusher came in. But I'll do that again. I said slide my protection because it's best to roll in the direction of the throw. And then once he gets inside the safety, it's a pretty easy one play touchdown against cover four. Next up, we got the PA jailbreak screen. Against cover three and cover four, the jailbreak screen can be a very successful play because the cornerbacks start back. Any play where the cornerbacks come forward, like a man coverage or a cover two, uh, will be the exact opposite. But you can see, it's just, you know, it's a good play just to, to keep your opponent on. Next up, we got the sluggo scene. This sluggo route is a one-play touchdown against man cover one and man zero. You just have to wait till it gets behind the cornerback and see it's an easy one-play touchdown. The offense itself is the normal Y off close. Now, as far as what plays you use what plays for, it's really simple. It's very easy to remember. The y, the y stick dig is your cover two man or cover two zone. Anything cover two, the Y stick dig will be a one-play touchdown. That includes cover six, cover nine, coverages like that where half the coverage is a cover two. You just have to isolate which side it is and run against that. Your double slants a cover three one-play touchdown. It's also a very good play against cover one man, but I'm going to call it just a cover three one play touchdown. Whether you're going against current gen or, or, or next gen you know, consoles, whether against current gen or next gen consoles, this is a one play touchdown against cover three, but it has a very different setup depending on which console you're on, which I will go over later in the video. Then escape is a cover four one play touchdown, whether it's cover four palms, cover four quarters, or cover four drop regular. This is a one play touchdown against all three. So you have a one play touchdown against just about every single defense in these three plays. If I were to show a fourth play, and I'm not sure if I will, I'll probably have extra plays on my Patreon on my join out community tab. The mesh spot would definitely be on there. We're going to start off with cover two like we always do we're going to go with the y stick dig now as always you're going to try to run these plays from the hash mark to the open side of the field it's just going to be best practice it's not 100 percent necessary but it's going to be helpful against cover two this motion here is going to be the most consistent. I'm going to make this motion with a couple different plays, so it shouldn't stand out too much to your opponent. I'm going to motion him in. I'm going to put him on the street. That's all I really got to do. And this wire out here is just going to completely destroy this outside. Now, I don't really have my fastest guy. I could have Hollywood Brown out here running this. Obviously, that would be even easier. But you can see, even with a decent speed guy like DeVerne, it's just it's just super seriously easy in a, a one-play touchdown against cover, too. If I really want to, I could also put my A route on the drag, give myself a little bit of a check 
down. This would probably be the ideal setup, lock the running back. Although the play gets gone so instantly, it's like I don't even have to do all that extra dressing. I mean, this is just something that just busts out in the open uh, really quickly. So a very easy play against cover two. But don't look now, this play is also a very good play against cover two man, which typically isn't the case. So let's go on this pick cover two man. Now we're gonna go, we're gonna do the exact same setup. We're gonna put this guy on a streak here. Block my running back one more time, put my around the drag. Like I said, this is best practice. You're gonna see, you get a very favorable animation, even though I have one of the best safeties in the game, one of the best man covered safeties in the game, in Tyron Matthew covering DuVernay, a very poor receiver. Like I said, exact same setup, whether you're running against cover two man, cover two zone, doesn't matter. The Y route just doesn't really get jammed, and he just gets outside here, above the safety even on this particular play. You can see right there, we do get caught that time, but you can see how explosive this is. We're going to do that one time against a uh, dime, so we can have a cornerback doing that. Just to show you guys, it's going to be the same result. Like I said, I'm only motioning this guy to put him on a streak because I really want that uh, that safety to get, get pulled back as much as possible. But you're going to see, same thing. He does not get jammed. And because of that, he just gets outside and gets a very easy one play touchdown. An even easier one because honestly, Tyron Matthews is probably a better cornerback than the fourth cornerback on the on anybody's team, really. So you can see how that play is glitching out, uh, you know. So you can see how glitchy the first play is against cover two. How about cover three? Next play we're going to have is the double slant. Like I said, this is going to work whether it's current gen or next gen. It's just a very different setup. We're going to start off with current gen because that's what we're on right now. This is another play where you're going to want to run it from the uh, hash mark to the open side of the field, but it's to the other side this time. And you're going to make a unique motion here. This is the only time on, on you're going to make this motion. You're going to motion out this tight end. I'm going to motion out that tight end. I'm going to put the B route here on a streak or a fade once again. I don't think it really matters. But you're going to see number one. One, these, this cornerback is well out of position and the fact that these two zones are right next to each other I think they just get really crossed up in communication as you can see right off the line we got uh, Mark or Hollywood Brown just speeding right up the streak and if you watch the cornerback we'll go to the replay if you watch the cornerback I don't know what happens there but he just like I said I, I really think it's because these two zones are so close to each other pre-snap they don't know what to, how to communicate with one another because they just both end up on an island instantly in the wrong direction I mean this is you know this is a cover three one play touchdown eight yards down the field you know what I mean like he's instantly gone as the second he gets off the line because this corner these cornerbacks just kind of bug out and I could throw the ball right now I could bullet pass lead right now outside and with this speed I'm gone for an easy one play touchdown from anywhere on the field we'll try to do that actually we'll actually we're gonna try to throw the ball uh, as quick as possible to see how quickly we can throw this ball and get a one play touchdown because this is something that's just you know look at that boom we're out ball's out nobody's in my area I still find it's best probably to hold it as long as possible um, to get that explosive animation because you never know your opponent could could take a better angle than a computer online but you can see how explosive this is I mean this is very easy if this is any you know if it's a man coverage a lot of times cover threes look like man cover ones the slants are obviously going to beat that so just keep that in mind but like I said I like to throw it as late as possible you can see how that safety definitely catches up though the longer the ball's in the air so it's really up to you when you want to throw it but it's a one play touchdown from anywhere now there was only one difference when it comes to current gen compared to next gen and that's the cover three one play touchdown so for that we're going to go with the double slant it's still the same you know cover three it's easy to remember but the double slant is different on how it beats cover three so let's go and let's pick the double slant the only thing you really got to remember is you got to run this from a hash mark uh, to the open side of the field, like right here, I'm on the right hash mark, running it to the open side of the field. You got to make that same motion in that we made in a lot of plays, and then you got to put this X route on a streak or a fade. I find the fade is a little bit better. Sometimes I feel like the fade just avoids um, getting zone chucked a little bit more. Uh, then I'm going to block the running back, although that's not really critical. I just want extra blocking. All I really have to do then, I'm going to slide my protection to the left a little bit because I find it's going to be best for the pass lead to roll in this direction. And then you can see here, uh, you, you know, once again, there's there's an issue I've explained this all the time when it comes to uh, cover through one play touchdowns on current gen consoles they are very different now there's a couple things that you have to watch for when you do this number one you have to watch this cornerback which on this particular play and most cover three one play touchdowns that I've put out like this on current gen they all do the same thing essentially this cornerback here will eventually stop 
the point of that is, I mean, the real reason that they're stopping has something to do with this crossing route. Uh, like, they're supposed to take that crossing route on, although realistically, he doesn't do anything. He just stops completely uh, on this play. So, like I said, super glitchy formation. But ultimately, uh, this particular play, once that cornerback stops, you bullet and pass lead away from the free safety. Now, there's a couple more things you got to do. Number one, for whatever reason, you have to wait for this receiver to pass about 33 yards, maybe 30 yards. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe 31 yards because there's some weird glitch in this game where you can only pass lead before 20 yards and after, I think, 31. I'm not really sure the exact number, but to be safe, it's, close, it's better to throw it like 35 yards. That's the rule of thumb that a lot of people have been going by. But ultimately, I'll show you that in a second, how it does not let you pass lead if you throw it too early. But if you make that pass lead outside, you can see it's a very easy touchdown, multiple touchdown against cover three on, on current gen. So I'll run that again, and I'll run it... Um, I'll throw the pass lead before he reaches 30 yards just to show you guys uh, what I'm talking about how it does not does not let you pass lead basically it just throws it right up the center there so it's a very timing based play but it's very easy to do as long as you follow the, the timing rules um, you know, it's it's not very hard to, to hit this one play touchdown. I've actually been doing this since last year. As you can see right here, once again, throw the ball a little bit early, but there didn't even matter. I threw the ball early, didn't get the pass lead, but it still was a one play touchdown to Sammy Watkins, who isn't even, if I had, you know, if I had Brown running that, Marcus Brown running that, uh, Hollywood Brown running that, it'd be even easier. But you can see, I mean, even without the pass lead, it still kind of gets there. So here we go once again. Like I said, that's once again, pass lead was non-existent because that threw it too early, but it's still a one-play touchdown. So very easy play, probably one of the easiest one-play touchdowns in current jam when it comes to cover three. So now we got cover two, we got cover three. How about cover four? There's two types of main cover fours. I'm gonna go over um, the actual cover four uh, drop real quick, although I, I picked the wrong formation there. We're gonna go over cover four drop contain first. It's another play where you're gonna run it from the hash mark to the open side of the field. This is a very unique one-play touchdown I'm about to show you guys. Typically cover fours have to isolate with like the B routes doing. You know what I mean? Like cover four one play touchdowns. I'll go ahead and I'll emulate uh, a cover four one play touchdown. Like this is typically a cover four one play touchdown, something like this, although the B route's not really that route. But this is typically the type of route that you have to hit a one play touchdown against cover four. You have to typically wait for that B route to cross the, you know, cross, split through the safeties and all kind of stuff. Although you can see right there, it didn't work out because of the pass pro. I'm pretty sure, the reason I'm showing this is I'm pretty sure you can do this. Although I, I haven't done this, this is not the one play touchdown I plan on showing you guys. But let's go and let's do this again. Like I said, the B route there, all I have to do is buy a lot of time, and that B route will eventually cross uh, and make a play. Well, you can see right here, it didn't work out. So, like I said, that's your typical one play touchdown against cover four. That's not the plan today. Today's one play touchdown against cover four, we're going after that Y route. So, we're going to make that same motion. We're going to run this from the hash mark, we're going to say, make that same motion, bring him in, put him on a streak, put the A route on a drag. The running back, we will block, although we Really don't have to because this play is going to be going instantly as you're going to see this y route here just gets right outside the cover four cornerback i don't know if i'll hit a one play touchdown with the verne that's the only thing he might not be fast enough but you can see how he gets outside and when i squish this formation up that cover four cornerback comes in and he actually acts like a man on watkins so it gives me that outside release on the safety like i said i'm going to get it with Deverne. i don't need to, to cheat and get it with um get it with anybody else as you can see right here we get that one play touchdown we're going to get it like I said, I don't want to have to change the Marcus Brown, but you can see this is easily a one-play touchdown with the right receiver. Except we got the RPO zone peak. This play right here, I mean, if it's a cover two man or any type of man covers, this B route here is a very good play. That's going to be good. That was actually a cover three. Anything where the cornerback isn't like right in his face. Like this is a cover. This looks like a man coverage or a man blitz. I mean, I could run this. I could run that against a lot of different things. That's a very good play. I could probably throw it to that slant nine times out of ten. Uh, if you have like an opportunity right here up the gut, obviously hang the ball off. That didn't work out very well right there. You could also run the ball, um, which obviously, you know, if there's if there's a scenario like right here, we had an opportunity. Anytime I have the formation spread. So here it looks like we definitely have an all-out man blitz. Go ahead and I'll take that uh, throw right there. Like I said, there's, it's really hard to defend this play. It's a very good RPO play. This year, this looks like a cover three. This is a perfect opportunity to get it out to my catch and run, uh, my bubble screen, although there it didn't really work out. Uh, but ultimately, that's going to be your best opportunity for that. Cover threes, cover fours. This looks like a man coverage 
Uh, as you can see right here, I mean, like, we could just, you know, we could do this all game, and the run play is really secondary compared to some of these. I keep getting man coverages, though. I would like to throw it to this guy. There you can see the man coverage actually, or the, the man coverage actually got in the way. It actually blocked that guy. So there's a good opportunity for that against pretty much any defense. But ultimately, against cover three and cover four, the Y routes can be best. Uh, if they spread the defense too much, the A route, the, uh, the running back's going to be best. And if it's a man coverage or really any zone coverage where he's inside the cornerback, the B route's going to be best. Next up, we got the mess spot. It's cover two zone. We're going to do the exact same thing. Motion this guy out, but the B route is streak, although now the RB route is going to be the play. Um, I don't know how good of a receiver I have here, but you can make some explosive plays. You can make some short throws like right there, catch it short of the safety, or you can try to make an explosive play and try to catch it down the field a little bit more. Uh, if it's a man coverage, uh, the drag routes are going to be really good. Uh, but ultimately, like I said, I don't know if this guy is really the best receiving back. And you can see the safety close. There's a little bit more speed, a little bit better receiving back. He might be able to get down the field for a one-play touchdown against cover two zone as well. Now, the play I'm going to show you guys is the escape. It really hits a one-play touchdown against every single defense in the game. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. You can see I called the play 120 times and I averaged 22 yards a play. It's a super explosive play. And the route that the running back is doing is an absolute glitch as well. It's not just going to be the one-play touchdown, but that China route that the running back is doing gets opens against every Every single defense in the game so it has an amazing check down let's go and let's pick that on the defensive side we're going to start off with tampa 2 like we always do and work our way back now when i originally showed this particular play i showed that it can beat a lot of different defenses mostly cover fours but i didn't show and i didn't know at the time that this also beats cover two with no adjustments the b route here you can basically just go right between the two safeties the safety on the left typically pulls apart and reacts to the receiver on the left side. I'll show that in the replay. As you can see right here, this receiver here is basically what's responsible for pulling these safeties apart as he has to react to that. And then you can see he's just totally out of position. So you can basically just throw this right up the middle. Go and I'll do that again. Sometimes, I mean, you don't need any adjustments, but sometimes the B route will even get past the safety over the top here. But you can see, I mean, as long as you have a good enough receiver, there's nothing there that's going to stop that when it comes to cover two. So like I said, that was typically a cover four play. Now it beats multiple defenses. We'll go ahead and we'll pick uh, cover two man because that's very similar. And here you can see it's going to have the exact same result. I mean, there's a lot of really good man coverage routes on this, like the running back I love, by the way. That's like a China route. I'm not really sure what they call that. But there is a lot of really good man options. Pretty much every route on this play is a good man option. The tight end is a good man option. The Y route is probably the only one that's not. But you can really hit up a lot of these receivers. But ultimately, you can also hit a one-play touchdown with the exact same receiver that we just did. So we'll go and we'll do that like i said he's inside that cornerback the cornerback does not get hands on him and then you can see he gets right over the top right over the middle again and splits the receivers one more time so a one play touchdown against cover two man and zone go we'll do that one more time just for posterity like i said it's really all about i mean i'm bullet and pass leading up in a way by the way just in case you guys are seeing that and they're basically just doing uh, uh what do they call that monkey rolls so that's every cover two play. What about cover three? Let's go ahead and let's pick that next. All I'm gonna do is put the X route on an out route and then smart route at about 10 yards. And then I can block my running back and block my tight end. And this will give me the best opportunity to one play touchdown against this defense. I could also streak the tight end if I feel confident. Uh, and that'll give me a little bit more separation when it comes to the crossing receiver. But protection really seems to be the biggest issue. As you can see right here, we get across that formation. We have a very easy crossing one play touchdown against cover three. The reason this works out like that is you can see how this cornerback here it reacts to this out route if you can see that just that slight reaction gets him out of position and the out route's open by the way if i wanted to hit that i could do that but you can see that gets him out of position enough that he can't recover to this crossing receiver i mean that's just about as much separation as you're going to get in a cover three in the game right now also has a lot of success against cover one man which is going to look similar pre-snap and we can do pretty much the exact same setup say we're not sure if it's cover three or cover one i mean the china route the the running back is going to be best against pretty much any man coverage. Looks like he's like double team right here. I mean, I love this route, and this is a great route, but you also have the option as the crosser, obviously. So since it looks the same, pre-snap, we'll do the exact same setup. We block our running back. Like I said, that running back, though, is very good against man coverages, and you're going to see how this route here will cross again and get a very easy one-play touchdown against cover three, cover one. I mean, it's hitting a home run against just about every defense so far. And then probably the defense that is best against, and I went over this in the original video, is it heavily glitches out cover four. So let's go ahead and let's pick cover four quarters. This play is at its glitchiest when you just run it against cover quarters because they completely forget to cover this guy. I mean, it's just, this play is so glitchy. He's gone by about 10 yards. And then for some reason, he didn't catch it, which is super weird, but it doesn't really matter because like I said, this is just, you know, how you gonna, you can't run cover four against this. If anybody runs cover four, you're gonna glitch it out 
super easy. I can't even get the ball up in the air enough. I mean, I'm basically just lobbing this up the second he gets about 10, 15 yards down the field. As you can see, for whatever reason, they just forget to cover him. So very easy play against cover four quarters. Don't run that defense. It's not very good unless you're trying to stop the run. And then last but not least, we have regular cover four, which I'll have to go to a dollar formation to do. Now this play here, I'm going to make that same motion like I was saying. I make this motion a lot in this formation. It should not stand out at all. And I'm going to drag both the Y route and the X route. That's all I really have to do. I'm going to block my running back. I'm going to put the A route on a streak. That's all I have to do. And then this B route here is going to be a super explosive one play touchdown against cover four. But you have to wait till it crosses the formation. As you can see right there, the cornerback does not drop back because there's nothing in his area calling him to. And the safety basically gets beat inside. Part of the reason I motion this guy in is because it makes this cornerback, I'm not even sure if that's a cornerback, I guess the safety, it makes this cornerback basically motion in as well. When I motion the, the receiver in, the cornerback follows, and then he basically just stands in no man's land. Nothing really engages him, and he basically is about you know, 15, 20 yards behind the other three deep safeties or the other three deep quarter coverage players, and then you can see he just is nowhere near uh, able to react to this throw. So once I get inside of the free safety or the you know the guy that's that's only the only guy that's doing his job you can see that i just had the bullet and pass lead away from him and there's nothing really stopping me so very easy one play touchdown against cover four so i'm just going to go to a motion that receiver in again you can see the cornerback follows that's one of the reasons this is so glitchy is because the cornerback does that not a lot of formations do that to the cornerback block my tight end and my running back i don't need the tight end pulling anybody back he's not really serving any purpose i think it'd rather the protection because it takes a while for this receiver to cross and then you can see once he's basically aligned with the safety i just bowl it and pass lead to the left and he gets over the cornerback and just one play touchdown now the red zone scissors is another play i really didn't go over too much it should have a, a very similar success to the first play as far as it has the same route and it'll do a lot of the same things but the running back is a very good man beating route so let's go let's pick that and we'll pick some man coverages here the running back here will beat just about any man coverage to the edge which is something that I think a lot of people know. I have a lot of people running this route on me. Sometimes I'm running man coverage. Uh, it basically gets me out of the man coverage altogether. But you can see the running back here, um, the China route's a good route, and it's pretty hard to stop. But this particular route is a much more explosive one. So if you have somebody running a lot of man coverages, I mean, pretty much every route on this play will have success. As you can see one more time, and this is the same route that we were just having success against every defense with in the other play. So you can really go in between these two plays and get a very similar effect. It's really a timing throw, and I probably want a better receiving back than what I have. But if you bullet and pass lead once he gets that, you know, into that break and he gets that separation, it's a very big play every single time. Now, this play has a two very good run plays. One is the inside zone, which I went over in the original video. Two is the power read. The power read is probably my favorite play if you have a mobile quarterback. This is something that is really uh, a play that I just found and fell in love with. So let's go and let's pick that. But let's just continue to go with a random play here. So as far as the uh, the running back goes. I don't typically hand it off. I typically find it's best to keep it with the quarterback there. My center got in the way. But you can see a huge lane opened up right over the middle. I mean, let's just watch the replay here. You can see a lot of times this play here, the running back, usually gets deaded uh, the second that you uh, the second that you hike it. But look how much open space we have once I get past this original guy. Like I said, I ran into my center. But look at the space here. There's nothing over the middle of the field. So as long as you have a mobile quarterback, this can, could have been a huge run if I didn't run over Ben Powers. But you can see there's nothing there. So it's really on me for hitting the sprint button too soon but you can see how uh there's a there's nothing but space over the middle of the field when running this play i pretty much just take take my hand off the sticks entirely and just let the blocking set up and then you can see we have a lot of space right over the the middle there once again as we get a very big play you can hand it off but i find it only really works when this defensive end commits or just gets blocked entirely i don't find that the outside handoff is really the best way to go this is definitely a play that you can take it with the uh the running back but like i said it's really all about the quarterback it's right there i mean i don't know, I didn't accelerate very fast but you can see there's a lot of really good opportunity there like i said the defensive end he basically commits to the quarterback pretty quickly you can see him shooting side i tried to take it outside didn't get the best run the formation itself is the gun y off tree a week the play though that i'm talking about is the buck sweep this is a play where in previous years the buck sweep has had a really good iteration typically out of single back formations you typically had a toss this is actually a handoff but the buck sweep element is still there and you get some really overpowered blocking from the pulling guards you can see i just i just found it and i'm, I'm averaging like 13 yards of carry so this is a very overpowered run i'm also going to show you guys the power read but let's go let's go right into our audibles so if i were to go to my audibles i would say the power read definitely there the halfback base is a very good inside run and then the buck sweep which is the money run that's going to be 
huge play to the outside. The passing play is going to be the PA post there. So let's pick the buck sweep on the defensive side. We're just going to go random. Uh, we'll go random matching nickel. Now, as far as this play goes, it's this is just an this is just an incredible play. It's got to be new to the game this year. I don't remember buck sweep plays like this in the past. All you're really going to do is follow number Woo! seventy. Number seventy there is your lead blocker, and look at all the space out here. Once he gets on that guy, once he blows that edge up, I mean the blocking of this play is just insane. I mean this really reminds me of some of the better running plays in the past when it comes to uh, to buck sweeps because they used to be really overpowered there. I mean that guy just gets a piece of this guy right here to let me get outside. Or else it would have been blown up. But once you follow number 70, once you follow that lead blocker, look at the space out here, man. I mean, this is just insane. It's super consistent. You're going to get this a lot. This is definitely one of my favorite run plays in the game right now. I mean, this is a super consistent run play. And some of the other run plays I'm going to show you guys really have great counters. You can see, once again, 70, getting out on the edge, typically blocking a cornerback, swallowing up a cornerback or a safety. I mean, sometimes he'll get blocked early. He'll go, he'll, he'll gauge early. But he's really the guy to get out there. You can see right there, boom. He just blows that guy up. And look at how much space out I mean, this is like 20 to 30 yards with no real contesting. Uh, there's nothing really coming even close to me by the time I'm getting down the field for big runs. So let's go on this again. Like I said, 70's my dude Woo! following him. The receivers are blocking super sticky. They're sticking on the cornerbacks. And I'm just getting huge plays. Like I said, this is to me the best run play in the game. I don't know what the thumbnail is going to be, what the towel is going to be. Like I said, look at this. Look at the blocking downfield. Come on, 14. You could have helped out that dude. could have sprung me. 14 messed that whole play up. That would have been an easy touchdown. I'm going to move the ball over because this is super capable of touchdown runs and how I run this play I pretty much sprint the second I get the ball a lot of people say that's not a good thing to do but when you're running outside like this it's the best thing to do and the, and the blocking is just so phenomenal I mean I'm in love with this play it's such a good play the only other play that I really would run I mean the halfback base is a good run play inside you have that inside run option typically when people are, f are facing a, a gun formation like this they expect an inside run they expect an inside zone they expect a, a draw a halfback base something like that so if they're spread too far apart you could always run that i'm not a personally that's not my favorite inside run though that's something that is in the formation for people who like to run that uh, but ultimately my favorite inside run would be the power read and this play here i pretty much would only run this if I'm running the buck sweep and it looks like overloaded on that side, like we have a safety coming down the box there. So trying to get outside might be a, a daunting task. So hitting with a power read might be the best option as that safety will probably come down, take out this running back, and then I'll have an option to run inside with the quarterback. Now there, I mean, I'm pretty much running into that blitz anyway, so it didn't really get a huge gain, but that would be the second best option to me is running this play. And like I said, I pretty much always Fight. take the, uh, the ball with the quarterback. As you can see right here, I mean, I'm coming back the other way and we're getting a very big play. Like I said, this is a very very overpowered play too if you have a quarterback that is fast like Lamar Jackson or, or like any running quarterback really. So you got two really explosive options. Like I said, this one here might be as explosive Fight. as the original play. As you can see, I mean, I'm cutting back for a lot of really big gains. And this is just one of the better uh, run play tandems in the game. I know a lot of people don't like to run quarterback runs. That's probably the biggest Fight. deterrent. But you can see, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity in the opposite direction, too, which is something that a lot of people won't expect. One of the coolest things about this particular play is it really looks the same uh, as, as far as the pulling guards, as far as the animation of the handoff. Your opponent's going to think you're running the Bucks week the entire time and then every once in a while he's basically keeping with the quarterback Psych! and you have opportunities for some really big runs that they won't be expecting so definitely a good combination of two runs to run there but we have a good passing play too so let's go and let's pick the pa post dig shot we're gonna pick uh, tampa two here to start so this play here can be a one play touchdown against a lot of different defenses it's definitely something that your opponent will not be expecting because it's really a run heavy formation so against cover two zone put the b route on an out route of five yards and put the rb route on a hitch this is all you got to do i'll slide my protection to the uh right because i am going to throw to the x route and then you're going to see how this x route here once it gets to a certain point is a very easy one play touchdown because the safety here kind of lags off now there he was lit up and he still didn't make the play in time now if you watch the safety on the right there he reacts really oddly to these short routes he basically just thinks that he has to stop and come down on these really short routes and he really kind of wanders to the right it has nothing to do with the fact that i'm moving with the quarterback by the way he wanders to the right regardless whether i stay in the pocket or whatever you can see he's totally out of position so once this guy this the receiver gets inside of his safety i just had the bullet and pass lead up now there didn't necessarily get the best throw but you can see 
it still get over the top and like i said this is something that you'll see as we do this more and more that we get more and more separation there are things you can do to make this separation work even better if you motion this receiver in he'll get around the zone chuck now he won't get zone chucked uh by the uh by the cornerback and he'll get a little bit more acceleration you can also just put these two guys on five yard out routes so you don't have to do the hitch uh it's just you need a short route that's really the only thing that matters and then you can see here once again we have much more separation the other safety doesn't even come into play that time i didn't get the best throw and i had to back up a little bit as you can see, I mean, we're having a little bit of pressure issues, even though I have a lot of coverage out here. Shouldn't be having that problem, but I still am. As you can see, we get a bull rush animation here. Uh, but you can see, like I said, he's getting over the top. Very easy one play touchdown. That's probably the full setup. Motioning in that receiver makes it a lot easier. It takes away the acceleration loss that you get from the zone chuck. And then just putting these guys on five air out routes is really what's going to be best. Also works against cover two man. Motion this guy in again. Like I said, we want to get rid of that zone chuck animation. We're going to do the exact same setup because it's going to be pretty much the safety is going to react the same way, whether it's cover two man or zone. And then boom, we're getting over the top once again, even with a cornerback trailing. Cover two man, one play touchdown. Cover two zone, one play touchdown. The exact same setup. What about cover three though? This is going to be one of the tougher ones. So let's go and let's pick that. Against cover three, you're going to want to do pretty much the exact same setup. I'll slide my protection uh, to the right. But you're going to want to do the exact same setup with the exception of you're going to want to put the B route on a 10-yard out route, which you're just going to have to smart route them. And basically, that now that'll pull the cornerback down. I'm also going to want to put the Y route here on a streak. Now, doing all this, as you can see, I'm going to just buy a little protection. We get a very easy one-play touchdown to the uh, to the crossing receiver because the safety there really has to follow that uh, that running back back. It's going to work best from a hash mark, but you can really run it from anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Go ahead and run it from the hash mark this time. Hash marks are always better when it comes to one play touchdowns, but you can run it from anywhere on the field. So let's go and let's do this one more time. Like I said, I forgot to slide my protection there. I'll just have to roll out of the pocket. The rolling out is not important, by the way. I'm only doing that because I don't trust my protection. That's why I use Lamar Jackson in these videos. You can see we get another easy one play touchdown. So we're just going to watch what this uh, cornerback does here, how he reacts to the route combo. And you can see, number one, he, he reacts to the out route, which is probably a good move. But then once he turns his attention to the crossing receiver, he just completely glitches out. He just starts like juking himself. I don't know if he thinks he's tackling an invisible running back or what, but he just has no idea what to do. If a guy did all this extra stuff, he should probably be out of the league. I mean, this is something that if you saw this on game tape footage, who are you covering? Air? I mean, this is just one of the, one of the best reactions you're going to get in Madden when it comes to how glitchy this play is. Let's go and let's do this one more time. As we can watch this cornerback just completely glitch himself out. Once again, he has no idea where the play is or where he should be, and we get a very easy one-play touchdown over the top. Definitely one of the glitchiest plays in the game. So that's cover three. Cover one typically reacts the same, but let's go and let's pick that. Cover three and cover one look the exact same, so we're just going to give ourselves the exact same setup. So no matter what, you know, the shell looks like cover three or cover one. If we can't tell, it doesn't matter. And we're going to have the exact same route doing the exact same thing. Our running back or our, our defensive end got knocked down. I was so taken by that animation, I threw the ball late, but we still got the touchdown. I was watching that dude get clobbered. And you can see we have the exact same setup. This year, though, we probably want to run from the other hash mark. We don't want to shorten the field on a one play touchdown against cover one. If you're running against cover one, I mean, this setup here would be ideal. I mean, you obviously can just put the B route here on a drag, give yourself a really good check down. The B route, or the RB route here, you see gets open right over the middle. That's a really good man beater. The B route drag obviously is a really good man beater. So if it is actually somebody running a lot of cover one, this is gonna be the best setup, but you can run it the cover three way and it's gonna have the exact same effect as far as what routes get open. So here we go once again, like I said, just basically wait for this guy to get across. Very easy one play touchdown against cover one and cover three. And then next up we have our cover fours. We'll start off with cover four quarters. When it comes to cover four quarters, the best thing to do is motion this guy and just put the A route on a 10 yard comeback. That's all you really have to do. Uh, and you're gonna get uh, really good results. Buying time, once again, might be the biggest issue, but that basically is just gonna isolate this receiver, back, receiver on this cornerback. That's all you really have to do is isolate that receiver which if you don't make that adjustment he actually gets covered pretty good like i said if i just leave it as is a lot of times this second safety will come over and you can see here even this even the cornerback didn't really get i mean the receiver didn't really get separation so you really just have to put this uh this a right here on a 10 yard comeback that will make the the safety in his area react and then you can, like i said you can see you just get a very big play over the top so very little setup when it comes to cover four quarters. Cover four contain is even less. This play can be a natural one play touchdown against cover four, but putting the B route and the RB route on drags is going to make the most sense. That's going to work the best 
and they just basically have to wait for this X route here to cross that free safety and get a little bit of a better throw, but you can see I almost had that. We'll do that one more time. Before we do though, just watch this safety. Like I said, this safety here will drop down super low. You can see the depth difference between these two guys, and that's really what you're hoping for, is once he gets inside that safety and over the top of the strong safety, it's a very big play. So we'll go ahead and do that one more time. So that we basically just have to buy time, which shouldn't be too much of an issue. And then it's really all about timing when it comes to this throw. As you can see, we barely got it in there. That was a little bit behind. But you can see it's a one-play touchdown against cover four. We're going to do it one more time. Like I said, I'd like to get a better separation look than that. Like I said, it's really about when you throw it and how much of a bullet and pass lead away you get. Like, there we go. That's a much... The formation is the gun wing slot week. You guys, my four-play audibles, like I always do, the buck sweep read option is without doubt the best run play in this, game, in this particular uh, playbook. It's one of the better runs in the game. Uh, it's very similar to the play that I showed last week, but you can actually keep with your quarterback and have very explosive runs also, which you didn't have in the other play. As far as the halfback base, it's one of the best inside runs if they're spreading the line because when you're running wide, sweeping, looping runs to the left and right, like I'm going to show you in this play, you're going to get a lot of people that spread the defense. That's going to bring up a lot of opportunities for the halfback base and the power read which is also an inside run uh, i'm going to show you guys those three run plays today but if you want to see the fourth play one of which is the raven double post if you watch my channel you know how i like to do i like to show a pass play that can hit a home run against every single defense in the game now the fifth play uh, i have a couple of plays that will probably only be on my patreon my join out community tab but the pa bubble over is probably the best pass play uh, that i have left that's not my audibles uh, but the best run play since we're doing a running video will be the rpo zone peak so that would be my fifth play so we're going to pick that on the defensive side we're just going to pick a random 4-3. So this play here, this is a play where I showed you guys last week, it was a power read play. All you have to do is hold the A button, and for whatever reason, these guards do a terrific job of kicking out. There, that actually wasn't too great of a run block because the guard didn't get upfield. But you can see, I still have a lot of opportunity. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to be holding A and handing to this running back. Like I said, this is something where I pretty much can get outside of this every single time. But there's a caveat. You could also hold it with quarterback. This play is going to be especially dominant against man, like right here. We have nobody out there now there's one thing that i forgot to mention this is important when it comes to the pass plays always every single time you run this play motion this guy in it's going to help with the run plays too because a lot of times it'll bring the cornerbacks in and stuff like that it's going to help me get outside with the quarterback but you pretty much want to always motion this guy in it's going to make a huge difference when it comes to the scheme as i show you guys the pass play most likely tomorrow uh, because that motion in is going to be something that i do every single time when it comes to the pass play so like i said it'll help with the run plays as well if i keep it with the quarterback ultimately though this is going to be something where i could basically just keep it you can see right here i mean the blocking is great for the quarterback i should probably run out of bounds if you run with the quarterback you don't want to end up with getting fumbles and stuff like that but you can see how easy that is now here we have a really interesting look this is going to be my best opportunity to keep with the quarterback because you're going to see how these guys are all pretty much in the box you can see right there i mean that guy just didn't commit there's nothing out here anytime you have these type of man commit looks we have all these guys packed in the box keeping with the quarterback is going to be best because they just don't really handle that particularly well this is probably going to be your best look when it comes to running with the running back because you got a man coverage you can see there's no real um outside cornerback on the right side there's nothing really keep me from holding it to the running back and basically just spring to the edge you see the guard there does a great job of sealing i mean this is something where i should get 10 to 15 yards before i get touched any single time i run this now here we have a real thin line of fence you can see there's there's nothing really uh at the second level over the middle this is a perfect opportunity for the power read if i can get enough acceleration with this play i'm pretty much this is this is the exact opposite i'm never going to hand it to the running back typically i'm just typically going to keep with the quarterback you can see right here i mean it just basically leads me right to a hole as you can see there's nothing really on that second level but trying to get outside is not necessarily the move with this run so if your opponent's thin in the middle you're going to want to hit them with the uh the power read if, if they're thin outside you're going to end up with the buck sweep now we have that obvious safety blitz again this is probably best for an opportunity just to hit him with a power base because ultimately um you know this is something where i don't really want to take the chance with the extra animation time i just want to get up and get five yards on a particular play like that here's another play with a thin outside like i said i could try this and i like i said that guy the, 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 the guard isn't quite doing the job and it might be because i'm sprinting so quickly i'm not really sprinting up his back as i probably should be we'll try to do a better job of following our guard because ultimately he's the guy that's really going to lead us to daylight you can see right there that's how i want to do it you want to you want to be in the trail of the guard that's really the most important thing because he's the guy that's going to spring into daylight as you can see if i if i, I would not i'm not hitting the guns this time you know what i mean i'm basically just following 70. i'm going to let 70 seal me and you can see right there boom he takes me and now there's just nothing out here with the exception of one safety if i if i basically could make this one guy miss it's probably a touchdown uh but ultimately he catches me i'll still 
really, you know, a, a very explosive play to the outside on both directions. The thing about a play like this is your opponent's really not going to be able to pre-diagnose what's best to do. I mean, they're, they're going to, there's no real answer for a play like this because you can go explosive run in either direction and have big plays on opposite sides. So up to the point where you decide with the quarterback, they'll never have any idea what to do. Now there is a play that probably should have been put in my audibles earlier. That's the RPO zone peak. This is something that also looks very similar, but if your opponent gets crazy and starts run committing or something like that, you actually have an RPO where you can pass. So let's go and let's pick that on the defensive side. We will continue with random 4-3. And this is also a very good run play. Once again, we can take this outside. We can hand it off. We're still getting, you know, this is more like if there was a stretch run here, this would be more like the stretch run. You get the exact same look, but you're not necessarily getting the pulling blocking. You're just getting solid blocking. The play that I'm going to go over is the Raven double post. I would say the only real thing that you need to make sure you do is have your best receiver at this spot right here. I got Hollywood Brown running that. That's going to be the home run spot nine times out of ten, although it can change up based off what defensive coverage you're looking at. But for the most part, that's going to be the route. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. On the defensive side, we're just going to go with, uh, we're going to continue to match. We'll go with 4-3. We're going to start off with Tampa 2 like we always do. So in yesterday's video, I made mention that it's the most important thing, even when you're running the run plays, to motion this receiver in. It doesn't matter where you are on the field against what defense. I'm going to make that motion every single time so if you only did it during the pass plays your opponent would know it'd be a tell of what you're doing so make that motion every single time after that all you really have to do is put the wire out here on a slant everything else is really semantics at that point i could block my running back and block my tight ends it doesn't really matter uh but ultimately this is going to be a one play touchdown against cover two it's all about the x route so we're going to go we're going to block everybody we're going to give ourselves as much pass pro as possible and then you can see how that slant keeps that safety down we got a very easy one play touchdown against cover two zone and it's going to have a very effect against cover two man so we'll go to the replay this is a combination of routes i've used in a lot of different plays and a lot of different formations uh, as you can see he basically just gets inside of that safety and the slant is what kind of basically forces the uh, the other safety's hand as far as committing lower and letting this guy get behind uh, that safety. So very easy concept. Doesn't matter where you are on the field either. I mean, you can run this from anywhere with this exact same setup. So we'll go and move the ball over and we'll do that again. Now the setup changes a little bit. You can see the receivers react a little bit differently based off of where you are on the field. They'll, um, you know, sometimes they'll be more shallow than others, but it's gonna be the exact same way. So I won't mind giving myself, like the B route here is a great check down. It's like a zig route. That'll be perfect for what I'm trying to do. Uh, and then you can see here once again, I mean, we're getting right over the top. Although there, he reacted a little bit better. Maybe it's because it was a shorter side of the field, but it's not really going to matter. So ultimately, the exact same effect. So it doesn't really matter where we are on the field. We're going to run that again. We're going to go, we're going to match with cover two man this time because it's going to be the exact same result. We can do the exact same setup here. We don't really have to do any motions or anything, really. Like we can leave it just like this. And you'll see how the X route there will get open the exact same way. Like the actual motion on cover two is not that important. As you can see, he pretty much just gets inside of that jam. It's going to have that one play touchdown effect regardless. And it'll still work out. So like you want to do a setup just like this, this is fine. You know what I mean? You don't have to do any of the, the motions or anything like that. The X route here will have success getting over the top nine times out of 10 if you have a good enough receiver. And it might actually be better in man because a lot of times they can run into one another. Uh, and I'll, I'll see if I get that look. If I motion this guy in because they're so tight and because I'm putting this receiver, this Y route on, in, on an instant slant, a lot of times uh, he can actually uh, get in the way of the X route. As you can see right there, it kind of bumps him a little bit. There are benefits and there's drawbacks because the benefit is when you motion this receiver and he doesn't get jammed, he doesn't get pressed. When you leave him out wide, the cornerback gets hands on him. When he's in close to the line, he doesn't. But at the same time, he could also get uh, knocked off of his route. So that's cover two. Cover three has a slightly different setup. So let's go and let's pick that. So we're going to make that same motion, but we're going to highlight the other route this time. We're not going to highlight the X route. We're going to highlight the Y route. We're going to put the X route on a streak, and then we're going to basically uh, hit a different crossing pattern here. So the only real difference here, I think the X, the A route pretty much has to be on a five route out. But that's it. Now you're going to see the A route here, or the Y route rather, is going to be their home run play. As long as I get a good enough throw, I don't know if I'm getting a good enough throw. I should have bullet passed that instead of instead of uh, lobbed it. But you can see how that play really gets over the top. Let's do that again before I go to the replay and see what happens because I think I have way more separation if I threw that ball a little bit better. So A route on an out route, block on running back, streak the X route. That's all we're going to do. You're going to see how this this zig route here and this this route combo really keeps that cornerback down as you can see we're getting right over the top and we're doing it with DeVernay we're not doing it with Hollywood Brown so you're seeing that we're not even using our fastest receiver we're still having the same results also works against cover one so we're going to pick cover one hole all these routes are pretty much going to be cover one and cover zero but you're going to need um, a lot of you know additional blocking so the x route here is probably the best way to go 
Uh, the A route and the B route are really good check downs, but I'm going for the home run. So the X route is definitely going to be the best one. The, the post route is going to cook any man coverage, cover zero or cover one. You just have to make sure you have enough blocking. So once again, motion in the X route, put the Y route on a streak. Got my check down, so I'll block my running back. Just really have to slide protection by time. And we're gonna, I mean, I could take the A route, I could take the B route, they're all really open, but ultimately if somebody's running cover one, this guy's gonna cross and be a very big, easy one play touchdown. We're gonna move on to cover four. Let's do cover four regular first, because we're already set up for that. This was like, a, like what I was saying. We're gonna go exact same setup, but we're gonna, the Y route's the way to go here. So I don't really have to do anything, I'll, I'll pass block my running back, everything else is pretty much set up. You're gonna see how the Y route here just super glitches out this cornerback. I mean, I'm, I'm doing short sides. So that's going to probably be the issue that's going to keep me from scoring a touchdown. I'll probably have to move the ball back to wide side just because of the throw. But ultimately, you can see it gets over the top of the cornerback. We'll watch the replay real quick, though. You can see this cornerback, nothing lets this cornerback drop. He basically just stays down the whole time and lets this guy run right behind him, which is where you're going to have your opportunity. If I had a pass led up a little bit, probably would have been an easy touchdown. So we'll go and do that again. Get our wire out involved. Said this route here, once he gets past that safety, I mean it's just it's just easy money. This is this is as wide open a cover four one play touchdown as you're gonna get. And then also works against cover four match. And this will be the last play of this video. Let's go let's pick that. Now we've got a ton of separation all all video, but against cover four match, you're probably gonna get the most. All you have to do is make that motion one more time and then put the wire out on a 10-yard comeback. That's it. I will block my running back. You're gonna see how that comeback's really gonna confuse the safety and the cornerback. And the X route really just gets right past them, uh, which it covers, it actually covers this play pretty good if you don't make adjustments. So you have to make adjustments against cover four. A lot of cover four plays I put out really don't need a lot of adjustments. This one here doesn't need a lot of adjustments, but you need to make that comeback route or this will not work. So basically the cornerback and the safety have a little bit of a hard time communicating. By the time uh, the safety realizes it's his job to cover Brown, he's going for one play touchdown. All you have to do is basically just lob it up and it's kind of like a man coverage doesn't really cover. Now the last play is going to be the PA bubble Y over. This play here does not need as many adjustments and it only really works against cover two man and zone. Let's go and let's pick that. Not only works against cover two man zone, but it's super glitchy. All I have to do is put the Y route here on a streak and the X route here will be gone in a flash, pretty much as the ball is hiked. I mean, this is as good a cover two one play touchdown as you're gonna find the game because you really don't have to do anything. This route just runs right past this cornerback. It's really just one adjustment and go. And the cornerback, he just kind of runs right around the cornerback. I mean, a bullet passing outside away from the safety, that's pretty much it. It's a drop in the bucket. And like I said, it's a super explosive one play touchdown against cover two man and zone. Well, we'll pick that again. We'll pick cover two man. Against cover two man, though, the window is a little bit tighter. That's the only thing. You have to be sure. It still needs, it still requires that bullet, but you'll see. I mean, you need a little, you'll, you might not have a one play touchdown as well, but you'll see that you can get this opportunity as he runs around the cornerback the exact same way. I have to hold this ball a little bit longer, though, and I really have to, you know, you, you, that one there is a much tighter window. It's not a one play touchdown either, but it's a very big play. Now, the offense I'm going to show you guys today is out of the gun split twins. This formation might look familiar. I made a couple plays out of it last year when it was called the Heisman. Last Last year, though, it was really weird. You had three Heisman uh, players in the backfield, where this year you actually get running backs next to the quarterback. So it's much more traditional formation. But the three main plays that I'm going to use the most are going to be the power read, the shovel option, which I just mentioned. Like I said, I put something out from this similarly last year, and probably the halfback slip screen, the PAF slide. Now, there's a very glitchy play in this formation as well. This route here is essentially a one play touchdown against just about every single defense in the game if you set this up correctly. So if you guys want to see some one play touchdowns from this scheme, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. I could put out some one-play touchdowns from this formation tomorrow or Friday. There's no real run play going in the opposite direction. All the run plays are kind of going to the right. So passing is pretty much the only option. That's why the PF slide is going to be important. So these are going to be the four plays. If I were to pick a fifth play, I like the post halfback corner. That's a really good play when it comes to man coverage, especially. So we'll just pick that. It's really about these two plays. The power read is an inside run, even though in the diagram it looks like you can go outside with the running back. I'll show you what happens when you do that. It never really works out. To me, every time I run the power read, I am keeping it with the corner. Quarterback. That's the whole purpose of this play. Is when you do that, you typically um, you know, look at, let's see, he gets tackled pretty much every time. So it looks like a broken play. But the fact that the run gets shut down every single time actually is a huge benefit to this play because I'm going to use that running back as my lead blocker. Basically, just let that running back get tackled by the first uh, guy that comes in free every single time. So let's go ahead and let's let him, uh, you know, take himself out of the play. And you can see if I just let everything develop, I just have a huge hole. So I don't know if you guys noticed what happened there, but ultimately, once this play developed and once I chose to keep it with the uh, the quarterback, 
There is nothing down the field. There is nobody on this side of the field. And that's what makes this play so successful. Anytime you run a play with a running back, you typically only have nine blockers because you're running the ball with yourself and the quarterback's doing nothing. So it's really nine on 11. When you run it with your quarterback, now you have a lead blocker in your running back and basically everybody on your team is doing something on the play. So we're going to do that a couple of times. Like I said, there is a read for the shovel option and the half black slip screen and all these other plays. But with the power read, it just feels like you can run against just about anything. I can't Fight. say that there's really a look or uh, you know anything that I. I mean, it's just it's just such a good run play. I mean, you, obviously the better the play is going to be based off how fast Lamar Jackson is. I mean, you just have to look at this blocking. This blocking is incredible. That's what makes this play so good. Number one, the running back gets tackled. He always gets tackled. So the first guy that they let come in free always gets taken out of the play right away. Then you can see. I mean, I got a double team and I just got huge lanes all over the place. I would say the best way to stop this play would probably be to blitz it heavy. Like right here, we have a double safety blitz. That brings me to my next play, which can either be the shovel option or the slip screen. I would say if somebody does blitz this play heavy, the slip screen makes the most sense because the slip screen typically, you know, screens are best used against blitzes, heavy blitzes. Although there, he did catch me. But ultimately, the slip screen is going to have the most success if somebody decides to blitz this formation. So if you see that your opponent starts sending a lot of blitzes, like this could be a blitz here too. The safety comes down to the box. Um, I could basically just hit him with, hit him with this slip screen. The only thing about it is it takes a little bit of time for it to develop and slip screens are always rough when it comes to blitzes because they can get knocked off and, and bumped out of their route. Now the thing about the slip screen is you also have a really good option on the right side which as long as it's not a man coverage this RB route will typically get open as long as it's not a man coverage or a uh, hard flat. A card, any, any hard flat will typically be on that table route as well. But that's a really good option. Now the second best run play though for sure is definitely the shovel option. This play here you really have two options. You're going to have your left bumper and your right bumper. You're running back on your left you'll hit the left bumper you're running back on the right you hit the right bumper it's really that simple or you can actually keep with the quarterback too although i don't typically find that's the way you don't quite get the pitch animations that i've got in some other plays like that's one of the few issues when it comes to this shovel option is a lot of times i'm expecting to be able to get that pitch animation and i haven't been getting it uh when it comes to this so you really have to get the ball out a lot sooner at you know where in some other plays you can actually wait till you're running your quarterback's getting tackled where in some other plays, you can actually wait for your quarterback to essentially get tackled before you're getting the pitch out. This is not one of those plays. So it would have been better if you could, but ultimately this is still a really good play. Like I said, you just have to get that ball out quick and basically just sprint away from the uh, the defense as much as you can. But you can see even there, like I was, you know, that was not a good pitch. I got the bad pitch animation where essentially the running back like stops to catch it. And I don't know if it does this because, you know, I mean, he's just, this is not how you want him. You don't want him catching the ball in this posture, like he's down the field just catching a pass. Like, like an actual receiver you want him catching the ball in stride so I got the bad animation but I still am like five yards away from anybody and got nothing but space to the sideline it's a really good play I don't really think pitching it inside is ever a really good move I think that's a good way to get a fumble um, but it is an option if you see something if you see a lot of space inside pre-snap you might want to do that but ultimately to me this play is all about getting outside and just you know using whoever your fastest running back is to get the ball up the field as you can see if you do it correctly it's a very easy play now one of the cool things about this play too is if you don't want to you don't have to follow the pattern you can basically break off and do whatever you want uh if you feel like it's you know you can treat it like a blast or like a power run if you have big you know gaps in front of you the fact that you can basically run this play inside uh, it probably makes it better than the uh, the inside option because I don't really have blocking there that I like. So like I said, if I want to, just go ahead and run this right up in the lane and then boom, there's nothing even out here. Uh, as you can see, I mean, this could be a really good play on its own, even without the pitch. Uh, and I like that. I like the fact that it doesn't have you on rails. It lets you do whatever you want. And based off the fact that I was saying you don't really have a good running option to the left, this might be the best one because you can go wherever you want. So if you see your opponent over shifting to the right side or something like that, you could always take this play and run it around to the left so if you see your defense over shifted like this where you have you know basically the entire defense i said earlier i might have spoke too soon you don't really have a run play to the left well i guess you do in the shovel option since you can pretty much do whatever you want and just basically use lamar jackson's speed uh, and get to the edge and have big plays you need a good quarterback you need a fast quarterback to run this offense now when it comes to pass plays typically all the pass plays are going to be the left side which is going to be something that's going to catch your opponent off guard as well the paf slide uh, is a really good play this year you got two routes one i'm really only looking at two i guess i mean there are some one play touchdowns but i'll probably just have that on my patreon my join now community tab uh, but as far as the pass plays go i mean you really just were playing andrews versus dobbins that's really my only look you got a high low route they're pretty close to one another and you pretty much just choose now there i probably should have waited for the deeper route the deeper route is probably the option 
but we'll go and we'll do that again. So let's go ahead and let's run this. Like I said, I don't really look at too many other routes on this play. Like I said, this year, pretty much just going, you know, Andrews is going to be the read nine times out of 10. He beats man, he beats zone. That's pretty much why, where the running back only beats zone. So that's why I'm pretty much looking at Andrews the whole way. Uh, as you can do again right here, like I said, that oh, the rest of these guys really just pull back cover, and he's pretty much always going to be the option. Well, the running back was open too. That's the thing about this place. Pretty much both of these players are going to be open. Sometimes you're going to want to keep an eye on the other side, but ultimately I find that, you know, this is not my favorite play. It's something that you might have to do if your opponent starts catching on and trying to jump the routes going in the other direction. But ultimately, you know, I don't find that or Watkins are really great plays uh, when it comes to how this play is set up here. That must have been a crazy man blitz because Andrews was wide open. You can sacrifice Andrews, though, and make a big play out of the B route. This is a really good route combo because ultimately this here um, will pull all the coverages back and then you can basically just catch a, you know, a really deep ball over the top. This is also a cover two one play touchdown. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. You're going to want to run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field, but all you really have to do is put the B route here on a streak and this X route here will be a very big play against cover two zone so you can see right there we got a one play touchdown the very first play i didn't know i had brown in that spot but obviously that speed's going to help uh this all works out based off the fact that that x route just basically you know it's designed to get outside of cover twos uh so really just putting this guy on a streak is all i really need to do so that guy's going to pull back the zone coverage uh the a route here uh, really helps to pull that cornerback down you can see there i didn't get a touchdown but it's still a very big play you can run this from anywhere maybe center hash but you're gonna you're gonna lose uh some some catch and run space like i, I can run it here if i don't have all that space and i could still have success but a lot of times you'll you'll just get caught by the safety that much quicker so if you want to one play touchdown you definitely need space but this is a good play to be run from anywhere on the field if you do it without changing up that b route it actually still has success so but you can see it's much tighter the catch is almost contested on that play but ultimately streaking this guy here is pretty much the way to go and then, you know, they're actually through kind of early, but you can see I mean, we're getting big plays pretty much every single time, even when I don't necessarily run the play uh, as good as it can be run. That play can also have success against cover two man. So we're going to pick that exact same setup. You're going to see how this guy gets outside of that release. And you can see it's pretty much gone. I mean, it's something that, you know, this route, cover twos are very similar. So this route here, um, it's really just something that should be just about any single cover two. Cover two man, cover two zone. Anybody's running those two defenses, you can dial this up and run it the exact same way. And you still have a really good check down in the A route. But obviously, why would I go for that when I can basically just, you know, turn up field and get very easy one play touchdowns with that route. Now, this play can also have a lot of success against cover four quarters. So once again, same route. Let's go and let's pick that. So I'm going to run this from a hash once again so I can get a little more pass lead. But ultimately, you can run this play the exact same way. Put this B route on a streak. You will see that the safety will not get pulled back this time. He'll get pulled forward with that streak. Uh, now that's all I really got to do. This X route here will eventually get past this cornerback because he doesn't really get hands on him. It's almost like a man coverage, but they don't do anything to alter them. You don't chuck them. They don't, um, you know, press them at the line. I'm sure my speed advantage with uh, Hollywood Brown helps, but that's not really what's making this play happen. What's making this play happen is the fact that these uh, zone coverages, they just don't really cover like they're supposed to. Let's just put it that way. The zone, these, these are zone coverages that are like half between man and half between zone, which means that they're always have to be ready to switch off. And this route here, I don't know if they think they're going to have to switch off, but they never really get over top of it there's a lot of routes where cover four quarters does but this is not one of them lobbing this pass by the way is also very important as you can see right there if i was bullet passing some of these i probably wouldn't uh, make this play so make sure that you know you just throw a good pass and you should be good against any cover two and cover four match this has a lot of success against pretty much any man coverage so we're going to pick that again we'll start off with cover one man this play here i mean pretty much you know the tight end is going to be there again the b route is going to be the call though this time as you can see if you have a fast enough receiver i could easily get a one play touchdown against man coverage but both the crossing receivers are really good and i feel like even the uh, the x route is a good option i'm gonna try to get a one play touchdown here though based on the fact that Watkins might just not be fast enough as you can see right there to get past him but i mean this is pretty obvious we have a lot of man beating routes on this play and that includes the x route if you have a speed advantage at wide receiver this guy here will get gone i don't know if i have enough arm strength to really out throw that cornerback but you can see it drops into the bucket you can basically be going with the exact same route and obviously it'll work against man zero but let's go ahead and let's do that one time the only thing that's really going to change here is i probably want to pass block my running backs based off the fact that they don't really do anything on this play because they'll both get covered uh, but once again we're gonna have the exact same effect 
with the X route. Although here, like I said, hopefully the cornerback doesn't catch up. Lamar doesn't quite have the arm strength that I want, but you can see that he gets the ball out there enough that you can easily, you know, these, these routes, for whatever reason, even if it gets pressed, that route is a really good play and it's going to get passed for one play touchdown. So at the very least, you're gonna have to block the, uh, you know, one of your running backs. But that's pretty much it. I mean, you just need an additional blocker to pick up that guy. And then you can see how we're just, you know, bombing it up over the top again. Just as long as that ball gets over that cornerback's head. I'm getting nervous every time he's throwing it. But very big play, very easy one play touchdown against any man coverage. The next play is the post halfback corner. This is a really good man beating play that I use a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to focus specifically on man and pick a, we'll just pick random man coverage, I guess. So all I'm really going to do on this play is throw the running back every single time. This is a really good man beating route. It works every single time. It doesn't even matter who's in coverage, as long as you have a little bit of a speed advantage, I should say. But ultimately, the Y route here, as long as you wait for him to get outside, pull it, pass it outside, he pretty much always makes the play. That was actually really good coverage there. But for the most part, it's really just an easy steal of yards. I mean, it works well against zone coverages, too, because this is another play that just, you know, gets really deep. I mean, if you run against his zone coverage like I am now, just put the X route on a streak in that Y route will get open uh, because you know that zone chuck number one typically doesn't get off uh, and you can see there I don't even think I was in bounds you can motion this guy out too so man or zone that's a good option he'll get to the sideline a lot quicker and he'll get open even easier now as you can see he just has a lot of outside leverage like there that was a cover three um, where you know basically you'll see he gets open uh, outside very easily I mean you don't even have to put that guy on a streak to be honest with you. he's gonna get pulled out of the way uh, regardless so let's go let's just run like this and then you'll see like I said the wire out here is just gonna be in no man's land uh, against pretty much any coverage like I said because that that's zone chuck is really going to stop um, if you watch the guy in front of b he zone chucks uh the b route and that basically gets him out of position every single time by giving up his body so it's something i can just basically take this uh instantly by the time he gets off the zone chuck i'm already i'm already down the field next up we have the fake jet power pass so this is a quarterback run so you're definitely gonna need a fast qb but uh, you can see how you can get some really good blocking because you have a pulling receiver I find it's best typically to head up the center too. So right here, I'm gonna do that again. Like I said, I, I just find that um, a lot of times you're gonna take it off short, even if it's meant to be an outside run. It really only works if there's nobody outside here. Like right here, the cornerback's on the other side. And you can see now we can have success to the edge, but ultimately I find a lot of times if somebody cuts that off, you pretty much have to run right up the middle. And you need a really fast quarterback to run this. Next up, we have the four verticals. The best play against cover two the B route here will just be going right up the sideline just as long as uh, he gets, you know, you throw it once he gets past the cornerback. You could also put the Y route on the drag for a check down if you like. That will also help to pull that cornerback down, but you can see it's a very big play um, against cover two zone. Next up, we got the jet touch pass. So this play here, it's I mean it's pretty self-explanatory. I find it works best against cover three and cover four zones and man coverages. Cover two is about the only one that doesn't have a ton of success. Here you can see we have a safety kind of just hanging out out there. That could be an issue, but you can see if anything, we're not taking a loss. You could always move it, take it back inside as well. Next up, we got the Raven Sail. Put the wire out either on an in route or a drag. Or, you know, if you think it's a man coverage, you could also put him on a zig. But ultimately, this running back here is the start of the play. It's just the best cover three, cover four beater. It's the table route to the running back. I would say just putting the, uh, the wire out in a zig just to have a check down against any possible man would make the most sense. But like I said, cover three, cover four, so just go underneath. Get as much catch as run as you can. Against cover two, just streak. The, uh, the A route and the B route will be a very big play against cover two. As you can see, he just gets over the top of the cornerback and outside the safety. Next up, we got the halfback slip screen. The screen's the first read, but the uh, table route on the other side is a very good play against cover three and cover four zones, so it's something that you can throw in the mix. Uh, but this is a good play because you don't have to live and die by the... By the uh, the screenplay because a lot of times things can happen the running back can get caught up the blocker can get caught up there's a lot of things that go wrong so it's good to have that second option on the other side which is almost as reliable as the first option on the other side just make sure you put a running back at this fullback spot and you'll get better catch and runs next up we have the shovel option 
Shovel option is a good play if you have a mobile quarterback. Um, you flip it out to the RB route, which will typically be the bigger play, although Bobby Wagner did a pretty good job down there. This play here is going to be one of the better running plays in this formation. You have the option to pitch it either left or right, which you see is really, uh, you know, it's going to give you a lot of opportunities for big plays in multiple ways. Let's go ahead and let's go to the replay play. Um, to pitch it to the left, you just hit the LB, bump, the LB bumper, uh, which you can see right here. If I have a lane on the left side, uh, like right there, we have, a, we have a defender who's cheating to the right side. So obviously flipping him would be a mistake. But on the left side, I really didn't have anybody. They just followed the quarterback. And that was what gave me the opportunity to basically flip and run right up the middle. Now, to me, the best flip is pretty much always going to be to look for the outside flip. Next up, we have the Y curl. This is specifically a man coverage play. So any man coverage is going to have most success. This play, all I really want to do is hit this X route. Once the, uh, the X route gets outside the quarterback, just take that bullet and pass to the, the sideline. And it's a very easy uh, play against pretty much any man. I'll go ahead and I'll switch to cover two. That was cover one. Cover two is a little bit different because the cornerback does start outside, but you can still have success because the, because the cornerback typically has to flip his hips and turns back to the receiver. So pretty much any man coverage, including maybe man cover zero, which is what we're in now. Let's just make sure. Let me pull this up. Yeah, so when a man covers zero, it's going to be the same effect. Pretty much any man coverage. The X route is going to get open. So this is one of your best man beaters in the formation. Next up, we have the halfback power O. It's another good outside run play. Typically best against cover three and cover four, or man coverage, because there won't be any cornerbacks outside here as much. But, the, but against cover three and cover four, you can see the coverage or the cornerbacks drop back, which is one of the reasons this works so well. Um, as they drop back in the direction of travel here you can see over pursues outside it's still just a good run play so definitely one of the best run plays in this formation except we get the halfback slip screen it's another play it's really you know to me it's not necessarily about um, the screen itself as you have this good flat beater this good taper on the other side so cover three or cover four you'll have that option uh, but the screen obviously is is going to be one of your uh, it's really just about the two running backs that's really your read here left to right Next up, we have the inside zone split. So it's just one of the better inside run plays. Um, if you're, you know, this isn't to me the best running scheme necessarily, but you have a lot of good options when it comes to this particular play here. I could go any number of directions. It's just a good, it's just a, the, the best inside run in the formation. Next up, we got the PAF slide. It's a good cover to play as is. The X route here will just get open outside. As you can see the... The B route really pulls the safety across or makes them hesitate long enough that you can make a good play to the outside. Work even better if I run to the open side of the field is I can probably get a good catch and run. But at the end of the day, you can see that this is not really, I mean, this outside route just basically gets outside release. And then you can see you're going to basically bullet and pass it to the sideline for a very easy play. You could also streak the B route, but I don't think that that's necessary. As you can see, it's, it works out regardless as that safety is completely out of position. You get a very big play. The running backs are good under cover three and cover four zone, and the A route's a really good man beater. Now there, that was a, uh, a cover two. As you can see, he's not going to really get open against that. But you just have to keep an eye on the crossers. I typically like to play the crossers in the same direction. There you can see they drop back a little bit more. We get a very easy play. Like I said, the tight end coming across the center is your man beater for the most part. Next up, we got the red zone halfback corner. So any man covers the running back is going to be a very big play is that linebackers just don't do a very good job covering. I don't know why I didn't catch that, but you can see he's getting open. He's getting outside release. So let's go ahead and let's, like I said, I can just motion him out to get him a little bit quicker into that flat. And then you can see we're just not getting any catches. The running back's a very good route against man. I can motion him out if I want. Get a little bit of a a bit of a cheat here, but you can see that these linebackers are not going to be able to cover that. So I find it's best to keep them in the backfield because I don't have a ton of plays where I motion out the running back. But you can see how that's just, it's a really easy completion against any man coverage. Next about the gun split turns, you have the shovel option. Make sure to put a, a running back at the fullback spot. Here we have, um, you know, it's just a really easy read to the uh, to the outside. Typically, the pitch is always going to be the play to the right because the one to the left just feels a little bit too dangerous for me. But you can always hit the pitch to the left. There, to me, the rate of fumbling is a little bit higher, but you can see there is probably the better play. 
the pitch to the outside just feels a little bit safer as you'll typically find that you'll get the edge and be able to make a clean pitch uh, more often than to the other direction but just remember that you do have options here if you make a mistake like that though it's obviously going to result in a turnover so just make sure that um, you know from time to time it's going to make most sense like don't force it like right there just keep with the quarterback go down don't lose the ball don't turn it over. Here we go once again. Like I said, this is something where, you know, you can equate this to an interception more than a fumble because it's going to be something that if you pitch it at the wrong time, you're definitely going to pay for it. Let's go do this one more time. Like I said there, I just want to take it out as wide as possible. A lot of times the quarterback will turn to a blocker, but uh, typically it won't be in, in enough time to make it an advantage that you uh, would get normally. Next up out of the gun split twins, we have the Texas. This plays really a bunch of man beating routes. The A route is the only route that doesn't really beat man. Uh, but the RB route, I mean, I probably want to put a fullback. It's a bunch of man-beating routes. Uh, the B route here, that zig is going to be one of your first reads. The uh, the corner route's a really good route. Uh, and the fullback route's a really good route. Now, with the fullback, you want to make sure you put a running back in. I didn't do that. But typically, that's going to be um, a better play uh, if you have a little bit more speed. You could also motion that guy out. So that he's not getting in the way like the, the linebacker kind of gets in the way coming back. Um, as you can see, I mean, I could do that outside here and have a lot of success as well. As you can see, I'm having much more success. Even with a foot, look at him breaking tackles. But like I said, they're, they're all man-beating routes. That's the most important thing at the end of the day. We'll go with that X route one time. Like I said, that's the most critical timing throw would be that. As you can see, I have to throw it once he gets outside. It looks like he's covered up to that point. But pretty much all these routes be man. Next up, we have the PA deep outs. This is a good man cover two play and a good zone play. As the Y route here typically can split the uh, the two deep safeties, whether it's man cover zone or, or man zone or cover, whether it's man cover two or zone cover two. Against man, a lot of times he'll be lined up against like a linebacker, which is why he'll have that exact same success. We're safe. That was actually a cornerback that still had success, but it's the inside release that makes that successful. And then your outside routes are all check downs. Except we have the Y sale. The uh, the Y route and the A route are good. Well, actually every route except for the B route is a good man beater. The RB route is a really good uh, cover three or cover four play. As you can see, he's open underneath for an easy catch and run. Other than that, you mostly have man coverage uh, routes. Unless it's a cover two, then the B route can have a lot of success, although that um, was a cover two, and I recognize it late, but ultimately you still had a big play to the running back, so it doesn't really matter what coverage it is, the running back's good against any zone. Except we have the Y sale. The uh, the Y route and the A route are good. Well, actually, every route except for the B route is a good man beater. The RB route is a really good uh, cover three or cover four play. As you can see, he's open underneath for an easy catch and run. Other than that, you mostly have man coverage uh, routes. Unless it's a cover two, then the B route can have a lot of success although that um, was a cover two and I recognize it late but ultimately you still had a big play to the running back so it doesn't really matter what coverage it is the running back's good against any zone next up out of the tray open we have the verticals the four verticals this is another cover three one play touchdown against old Jen he's got the runner from the hash mark got a motion in this receiver and that's it. I'll block my running back. I'll even go as far as to slide my protection. And I will double team this defensive end because I want to have the freedom to roll in that direction to shorten the throw. Because I don't necessarily think I have all the throw power that I want. And then you can see right here we get an easy one play touchdown just as long as we pass lead away from the safety. We have to watch for a couple things. There's a couple of very important things for this to work because you can't pass lead from the pocket unless the receivers cross 35 yards. That's something new to the game in old gen. I don't know why, but once he gets 35 yards away, you can see the ball's not out of my hand. I can you know, basically pass lead at this point. Uh, ultimately, you also have to make sure you watch for this cornerback to slow down and stop reacting. So once he stops reacting, which he will do because that's what the play is designed to do, that's when you have the ability to bullet and pass lead away from the free safety who's way out of position. You guys will see here, if it doesn't go 35 yards, or if you throw the ball before the receiver goes 35 yards, you will not be able to pass lead. It's really that simple. They said, right, we'll throw it early. Still almost had success, but you're going to get more interceptions than anything. As you can see, I couldn't pass lead outside away from the free safety. Except we got the inside zone. Next, this is just the best run play in the formation. Um, you know, it's a consistent three to five yard run, if, if at, at worst. 
I mean, right here, you really want to run this when they when the defense is really spread. But you can see if you get that second level blocking, I mean, you can really have some explosive runs. So definitely the most important run play in this formation. Next up, we got the stick. So I'll just put the A route on streak. And once this uh, B route gets past the cornerback, just bullet pass lead to the sideline. And you have a very big play. The Y route's good against cover three. And the X route's good against man. Next up, we got the PA post dig shot. Another cover for one play touchdown. You don't have to really make any adjustments, but there are some things you can do to make this play a little bit better. Uh, but ultimately, it's a it's a natural cover for one play TD. As you can see, it just creates its own um, one play touchdown. You could also drag the B route, or you can drag the RB route um, and leave the B route doing it's doing all these things just to pull the safety down just a little bit easier. Uh, with when it comes to um, you know basically. Keeping the keeping Matthew down, as you can see right there. I mean, I forgot to slap my protection once again. But let's go and let's do that again. I'll slap my protection. So this will help keep that edge. And then I can basically just get that bombing up touchdown one more time. You can see the, the cover is still kind of close, but it's still an easy one-click touchdown. Next up, we got the fullback dive. So another good play, um, just a short yards run. Typically want to put a running back at the fullback spot, but this will have success if you need to pick up any short gains uh, and your opponent doesn't close their gaps. As you can see, we're going to have, you know, they're actually kind of ran into that guy. Uh, but for the most part, we're just going to have um, a really quick, you know, short yards run. Next up, we get the halfback counter weak. This play here is best if they're shifting too much to the uh, the two tight end side and you just hit them with a counter. Um, this play can have a lot of success. You ha I, I have an issue with overrunning my blockers a little bit, but as long as you wait for that pulling uh, fullback or guard to do their job, you typically have uh, a lot of success. There's typically a very good lane. So anytime that they're over shift to the right or you have a wide gap, between a defensive end and a defensive tackle on the left side there. As you can see, I want the left end or the outside linebacker to have outside shoulder over my guard, over my tackle because typically that's what takes him out of the play when the pulling guard comes around. So those are the two looks you're going to want to see the most when it comes to running this defensive play. Like right here, the defensive uh, outside linebacker is too close to that defensive end. I'm not going to get the spacing I typically want, although there you can see we still had some success. So that's, you, know, you can have success against a lot of different looks. I just find it's best to do it against the wider looks or the overshifted looks to the tight ends. Next up, we have the halfback power O. I typically want to flip this. The more spread the defensive alignment, the better. Uh, then basically just treat it like almost like a counterplay. Just kind of leave that, that lead blocker coming around. Typically does a good job. Um, it's going to be best if the uh, defensive end is out really wide, which typically people want to try to maintain the outside edge. So this is going to be a perfect counter to that. Here we have a blitzer. This would probably be a good look because the blitzer will probably take himself out of the play. But realistically, that's something where you know you, you want to. This is going to be best against a um, little bit more vanilla defenses. Necessarily, blitzing is not necessarily the best way to run this. So here we don't have any gaps. I'm going to run it anyway. They said that defensive end typically takes himself out of the play, and then you know you're pulling guards. Got to block somebody. Uh, typically, the faster your guard, the better. There he came around. Really didn't do much at all. But you can see if you have holes, um, it's just going to create those holes, wide those holes even bigger. Kind of like an 0 one trap play. Next up, we get the halfback toss. This play is going to be best against cover three, cover fours, uh, you know, off coverage zones like that. As you can see right there, I mean, I don't have a lot of speed to running back, so I might not be able to stretch this out like I want to. But this play here is typically going to be best against any coverage where the cornerbacks uh, pull back. Uh, away from the uh, line of scrimmage. That's going to be um, cover three and cover four zones. Next up, we have the PA scissors. Against uh, pretty much any defense, if you motion this guy in here and put him on a drag uh, and then put the B route on a streak, you pretty much have a high-low concept with the A route and the X route. Um, where, like I said, I don't really care what the defense is. One of these two will get open pretty much every time. Although there, I threw to the wrong button. I accidentally hit the X button. I was trying to hit the A button, but they're both open, if that's the point. Um, you don't have to motion in the X route either. You can just put them on a drag. But I find it works best if it gets across the field. Timing-wise, it works best if it gets across the field a little bit quicker. Uh, ultimately, this motion can be a little bit of a tell. So just make sure that, um, you know, you're basically... Um, 
as we get a really tight throw there. But make sure that you're uh, motioning in the receiver sometimes in some of the run plays, just so it's not so obvious that this is, um, you know, a uh, a pass play based off of the motion. You don't want to make it the only option. So here we have a, another one, another man coverage, and even the deep route gets open. So against any man or zone, the deep route or the short route will have success, making this a very hard to stop pass play. The running back, you don't really have to, I don't really look at him much, so you can take him away entirely if you think you need additional blocking. And then you can see, like I said, we're, I mean, we have a good tight end, so we're pretty much just getting that deep route, whether it's man or zone. Next up, we have the PA sprint halfback flat. This player, all you gotta do is put the A route on a streak. Uh, and that's pretty much it. You're just going to play the running back versus the B route. As you can see, the A route is going to pull back a lot of zone coverages um, and, you know, man coverage safeties like in cover two. So all you have to do is put him on a streak. You have a good check down against man with the X route, and the Y route is also a good check down against zone, especially against cover three. Now, that was a man coverage, and I made a poor read, but uh, that running back is a good play underneath, especially cover three and cover four zone. So let's do this again. So there we have that cover three. So, or it was it a man coverage? I'm not really sure, but you can see the running backs out wide open in the flat. So definitely a good play. Pretty much every route here is a good play. The only route that's meant to pull just pull back coverage is going to be the A route. So let's do that one more time. This here looks like we got that B route again. Like I said, cover three, cover two, cover four. It doesn't matter. They all react to that streak route and this tight end will be wide open. Next up, we got the post shot. This play can have success against pretty much any defense as far as the crossers go. The A route, you're basically just starting off with the B route and then working your way back to the A route, which is the tight end there. Whichever one gets open first, you typically want to go with. Uh, they're both going to be good against man. They're both going to be good against zone. Here it looks like they're dropping back, so I'll take the short check down and run underneath. Really simple play there. This play can be a one-play touchdown against cover three if you motion in the X route. I'm not sure if you have to run it from the hash mark, but I typically do. And all you really have to do is just wait for him to cross. Although here, I'm not really sure what defense that was. That looked like it was more like a, um, I'm not really sure. That might have been a, cover, a quarters coverage. Against cover three, you can have a one-play touchdown if you run it from the hash mark, motion this receiver in, and basically just wait for him to cross the field. Um, he's going to be uh, an easy... Uh, look, I mean, you need some speed, but ultimately, like I said, it's something that is one of the easier one play touchdowns against cover three. Against cover four, there's no setup required at all. I uh, just wait for this X route once again to cross and then bomb it up over the top. Bullet pass leading away from uh, Diggs to safety. Uh, this free safety, it's really simple. I'll go to the replay just to show um, how that looks. So we go back here, like I said, this here, all you have to do, wait for him to cross that free safety and I'm loading up bullet pass the way, just as long as he's past um, this guy here. Once he's over the top of this safety, there's nothing that safety can do. So if you go back to the quarterback, I'm already loading up the second I see him get inside. Next up, we got the corner strike. This plays best against cover three. All you have to do is put the A route on a streak motion this guy out so i really have to do the a route on a fade might be even better because a lot of times he'll get jammed on a streak but you can see against cover three he just basically gets right up the, the seam there you don't even really have to make that motion you can just put the a route on a fade and he'll have that uh they'll pretty much have that same effect as you can see he still gets past the cornerback just as long as you have enough speed i'm not getting one play touchdowns but if i switched around my receivers a little bit that would be an easy one play touchdown Ultimately, you know, just, just make sure that you motion this guy out. That's the best way to run it. I'll do that one more time. We said, got him on a fade because I find it's a little bit better. And I just want to get a touchdown here just to say that I did. And there we go. Touchdown. Next up, out of the pistol bunch, we have the flanker drive. Against cover two zone, just put the A route on the streak. You're going to need a pretty fast tight end, but typically he will get past this cornerback here uh, for a really easy play outside against cover two zone. Against cover three, just fade the A route. And this tight end will pull that cornerback down enough that this receiver will get past the cornerback and up the cover three seam for a one-play touchdown. Typically, you have to run it from the open side of the field. And it takes a little bit of time. Make sure you bullet and pass it away from that safety because he does take over coverage responsibility. But ultimately, it's a very easy one-play touchdown against cover three and a big play against cover two. Next up, we got the PA boot slide. It's another play that's good against random. The comeback is a good play. The RB route is a good play against man or zone. The comeback routes are a good play against man or zone. 
Pretty much every route here is good against man or zone. He's really just going for front to back. The comeback route being a really good check down against man, which is what it looks like we have here. Uh, but ultimately, you're just reading the short route to the deep route. The first route, which is the A route, the tight end, typically only beats zone. But the way this is being run right now, he's not even having success getting out into his pattern. So next up, we got the PA deep in. Against cover two, just motion out the B route. And it's going to be a very big play. You could also put the RB route on a streak, but it's not 100% necessary as the results are going to, you know, you're going to get the result you want before that player even breaks his stride. It's a really quick play, so I would say typically um, there we get that inside, that outside release that we want. You see, you could streak, you could also streak the receiver next to it. I find that that's, it really doesn't matter. Next up, we have the Seattle. Another really good cover three play. You can just motion this guy out and you'll have a big play up the seam to the tight end. As you can see right there, that's that's something you could do um, to run this play regularly. But you could also just put the B route on a streak and you're gonna have a lot of success over the top. Although I don't know what happened there with that pass. As you can see, it did get past the covers pretty quickly. Let's do that again. Like I said, streak the B route. And bullet pass lead away from the safety. As you can see, that uh, is a really easy one play touchdown against any four vertical style concept. Against cover two, we'll have to go back to that. Against cover two, just put the RB route on a streak, and the B route will have success outside the cover two. I'm rolling in the direction of the cover two, but you can see you can have a very big play against cover two zone as well. Against pretty much any defense, you can just streak the RB route, put the B route, the A route on, on drag or a drag. And these crossing routes will have success against pretty much any man or zone they'll get open. Which is a common concept that I use quite a bit. Then we'll do that again. Like I said, the drag here is your check down. The B, I don't know what happened. Why didn't catch it? But uh, those, both of those routes will get open. You just have to take whichever one gets open first. The shorter route or the deeper route. Next up, we got the PA Raven Flood. All I have to do against cover two zone, all I have to do is put the RB route on a streak. And the B route here can have a very big play just as long as you throw it with uh, correct timing and run it to the open side of the field. I'm not really running it from the open side of the field yet. We'll go and move the ball, get a little bit more catch and run there. Uh, but that's all you really have to do. You can also just block the Y route and motion out the, uh, I'm sorry, not motion out the RB route. Just put the RB route on a streak and he's going to have the exact same success. So we don't really need that extra motion. We can go with the second, with the extra blocking. And then you can see this guy here just runs right past, um, you know, some of the better coverage in the game, Tyron Matthew. Like I said, I don't, have to, I don't need the Y route doing what he's doing. That's fine. I can just leave him leave him alone. Like I said, this route right here just gets right up the seam. It gets very big plays, especially if you have a, a fast receiver like this. Next up, we got the Ravens counter lead. This is one of the better run plays I've found. Ultimately, you just get really good blocking um, from all the guys in the backfield. I don't know. This is something that I put out multiple years on uh, my YouTube. Um, as you can see, I mean, you can take this. It's an inside run. But the blocking works so well, you can easily take it outside if the if the mid read's not there. So definitely one of the better run plays in the game, pretty much every year, and definitely one of the one of, better the one of the better run plays in this particular pl playbook. Next up, out of the pistol full house base, we have the Ravens read option. If you have a hole right in front of you, a lot of times it's best just hold the A button and just take that. As you can see on the very first play, we're getting a very big run right up the middle. That's something they want you to read the defensive end. Um, as you can see, there's a player with an R here. They want you to read the, the outside linebacker a lot of times. I think it was this guy. I'm not really sure. Um, but they want you to typically read him. If he crashes in, a lot of times they want you to hold it with the quarterback. But there he actually went out in the coverage. So if I hit the button here, you can see right there, he's the read defender. So if he crashes in, I'm supposed to not hand it away. But nine times out of ten, I hand it away because I just don't find... Unless you have a guy like Lamar Jackson, which is why I took this playbook here. If he crashes in like he does there, you can typically go outside with it. But like I said, you can see there's other defenders that typically come flying in. So to me, this is a play where it's really just best to hold it uh, and hand it off no matter what. Next up, we got the wing power O. This play here is just a good run play. I mean, it's a good interior run play, but you can run this like a stretch if the, if the initial reason is not there. Some plays it's hard 
to turn. I mean, you can run this play the way. I'm flipping it with the right stick because I, I think I see a little bit of a blocking, um, you know, advantage to one side or the other. Um, but it's real simple. I mean, if it's a cover three, the only way you would not have a blocking advantage is if there's a cover three and there's a safety in the box like there is right here on the left side. So now I just want to run as is because I want to run away from that additional defender in the box. And it's really an easy play. But you can run to either side. Like right here, we got a cover two. I'll run to the open side of the field. I can make that my read, although ultimately I do feel like I probably had an advantage to the weak side. But uh, I tried to give myself more advantage on the play. Here's cover three, safety in the box one more time. Like I said, he's just going to make me stretch this out. Um, if that cornerback would have held his block a little bit more, I probably would have had a better run. But this play will be best because it's an outside run. It will be best against cover three and cover four zones, uh, typically where the, uh, the cornerbacks uh, play back. Because you can see in like a cover two like that was, they're immediately dropping down into the box uh, and making it a little bit harder for run lanes. Here, once again, like I said, they're kind of pinched on the right side. This is the same defensive look that I went the opposite way on last time, although obviously that wasn't a good move. As you can see right here, we get much more success going in the uh, opposite direction away from that pinched alignment. Next up, we have the 494F flat. This is a cover three, one play touchdown on old gen. <clears throat> so. Motion this guy in, put him on a streak, block your running backs. That's all you really have to do. Drag the B route for a check down. And you have to wait till the receiver crosses 35 yards or won't let you pass lead outside, which is pretty important when it comes to this play. You also have to run it from the hash mark to the open side of the field for it to work. But like I said, you really have to watch. That's the hardest part about old gen is you have to watch until he passes 35 yards. That's right about here. And now you can see it let me pass lead. But with Lamar Jackson not necessarily having the best arm, I find it's best to slide the protection in the direction that you're throwing because not everybody has the best arm. And you're going to need that as well. I also like to double team the edge sometimes so that I can slide in that way, in that direction. Although they keep not moving. So that's <laughs> whatever. So there I had to step up in the pocket. But you can see the pass lead works again because the uh, receiver took so long, or the play took so long based off of the fact that I didn't have protection. And let's go and let's watch the replay. Once this receiver passes 35 yards, which is right about here, I can throw the ball, pass it away from the safety. As you can see, time worked out perfectly because I stepped up just in time to do that. Next up, we got the halfback counter. It's another good play if they're over shifted to the one side or if you have uh, some gaps. Um, in the defensive alignment. If they're spread for this type of alignment, that's going to be best. You're also not going to want, like right here, I'm not going to want to run it towards a cover three safety. I would just change plays. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll switch that. Like I said, that there, I'd probably go with like a stretch run or something like that. But ultimately, if it's a spread alignment or your outside linebacker slash defensive end has uh, a wide uh, alignment like that, typically he'll take himself out of the play. He actually did a pretty good job there, but typically that's a good look as well where he'll take himself out of the play. Like right here where he's really tight to the box. I don't necessarily want to do that because he's going to get towards my running back a lot quicker. You can see how it just kind of blows everything up and I just kind of run back to the line. Next up, we got the Blast Alert X Smoke. It's a good run play. Because of the additional blocking, it's um, it's mostly an inside run play, but you also have the option for a uh, smoke. Like right here, this looks like a man coverage, so this definitely wouldn't be a good look. If you throw it against the wrong defense, you're definitely going to end up with an interception or at the very least a tackle for a loss. That really only works against cover three and cover four zones. Otherwise, you pretty much always have to run it to the running back. Now, it looks like they're run committing. I don't know if this is a cover four quarters defense or what. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is something where, you know, you can have a lot of success just as long as you make the accurate reads. So let's do that again. Like I said here, definitely probably going to be a cover three because of the safety coming down the box. And you can see, you know, that guy will be off. I should have waited until he actually got off a little bit further. Next up, we got the PA boot flow. This is going to be best against, uh, you know, well, the, the tight end, the A route and the X route would be best against man covers. The running back would be best against zone. As you can see, I mean, I typically want to have a, uh, a running back there so I can catch and run a little bit better. But that's your zone check down against cover three and cover four. Everything else is pretty much going to be a man play. Like right here, we have the uh, a man blitz. So we have the tight end, we have the comeback route. Those are going to be your best options. But ultimately, you just want to want to read front to back. You're going to want to read RB routes to A routes to uh, to comeback route to the receiver. Next up, we got the PA scissors. It's another cover three one play touchdown on old gen consoles. Just going to motion this guy in here, put him on a streak. That's all we have to do. Block the running back. I'll even slide my protection to the left so I can roll in that direction if I have to. 
Also got to run this from the hash mark and you have to wait for this receiver here to pass 35 yards. If you don't wait for him to pass 35 yards, you cannot pass lead. So you have to wait for the receiver to pass 35 yards for that pass lead to come back. You can see right there, threw it too early, doesn't really get where it needs to go. I'll go as far as to double team my edge rusher too, because like I said, I like to roll in that direction. But uh, ultimately, like I said, got to wait. Once that guy passes 35 yards, the pass lead is back. And you can see how you have an opportunity there. I'm going to motion this guy in again. I can put him on a fade also. And I can block everybody but the B route. The B route is the only route that I need on this play. And then you can see once again. Once he gets past 35 yards, pass lead is back. And we can have success. We had a little bit more speed. It'd be a little bit easier. But still, I won't play touchdown. Next up, we got the PA scissors. Just put the B route and a streak in the A route. We'll get open against just about any zone coverage. Here, it looks like we have a cover four, though. This is typically a couple of quarters. It's probably one of the few zone coverages where it doesn't because it's a matching concept. But again, it's cover two, cover three, and regular cover four. The A route will get open. Uh, and if it's your old console, it'll pretty much be the exact same thing. Uh, but ultimately, you can see that's a very easy play. Against cover three and cover four, especially the RB route, We'll get open in the flat, although here you can see we don't have that. It looks like we're going to cover three again. Threw that a little bit late, but um, you can see it's going to get open against just about any zone. And then against cover three and cover four, the fullback will get open. Just make sure you have him uh, have a running back at that spot. Except we got the Ravens power. This run's going to be best against cover three and cover four zones. As you can see, the quarterback typically plays back. To defend their uh, zone coverage first, taking them out of the play. You can run against just about anything, but you typically don't want to run it against uh, like a look like right there where there's a box safety. But a lot of times you really won't have a choice based on the fact that it's such a heavily loaded formation to one side. But you can see how you know typically you'll have success because you'll have that block advantage based on the fact that the cornerback runs out of the play. Next up, we got the read option. If you got a hole right up the center, it's best just hold the A button and take that. Uh, the, if you have a fast quarterback, though, you have another option here. So right here, got that outside guy. It's going to be best to maybe. It's a really successful straight-ahead run. I find the quarterback only really works if they're not really you know, shifting in this direction. I'll try to force it with the quarterback, but ultimately it's probably best just to take the handoff nine times out of ten because the alignment doesn't really call for outside runs a lot. As you can see right here, we can get this. We get the same results just by holding it and handing it off. Next up, we got the stretch alert looky. So handing it off is going to be best against cover three. As you can see right there, that cornerback just ran straight back and took himself out of the play. Against cover three and cover four, against man coverages, like that's why a lot of times against goal lines, best to just throw it quick. Although I didn't adjust very well there. I adjusted up the field rather than towards the ball. We're going to do that again. You can have success with that against man or zone. It's going to have a lot of success, but it really depends on the zone. Uh, but ultimately, you know, cover three, cover four, hand it off. Anything else, the X route's a good option. Next up, we have the PA boot left tackle. This play is going to be good against man or zone. I find if it's a zone coverage, motioning across for a card makes the play a little bit more successful. You also want to put a running back at that spot. Here we actually have a man coverage and Ricard was wide open um, because you definitely don't want to test a guy like Tyron Matthew in a man coverage. Against man or zone, this play will have success. The fullback is typically going to be best like cover three option. You want to put a running back here because I'm not going to get a great catch and run with Patrick Ricard. But ultimately, that's a really good zone uh, beating option against cover three, cover four off zones. Then you also have the A route here, which is going to be a really good route coming over the middle. And the comeback route, um, because that was really late developing because he was really in jam. But the comeback route should be pretty much any man or zone. So you're reading high to low. You're reading uh, you know, short crossing fullback to tight end to receiver on the comeback route. Next up, we have the PA Flood. This play doesn't take any adjustments. The, uh, the running back is a good check down to the flat. You're basically just playing that to the corner route, tight end over the top. One of the two should be open against pretty much any zone. We don't really have a ton of man beaters, so either putting the X route on a drag or a slant is going to be uh, the best option. I mean, the route that he's in kind of is a man beater, but I don't find that it's um, it's it's it develops quickly enough. So, I mean, it's a man beating route, but it's just something that just takes a little while. You can see right here, we have a man coverage. Maybe that's a couple of quarters, but it takes forever to get open. So, to me, a slant or a drag is a better option or even an in route. Next up, we got the power option. To me, the pitcher is definitely the better option on the play with most quarterbacks. As you can see, I mean, he just basically just warps the ball five yards ahead and makes it very easy to, to the very least, get, uh, you know, a couple of yards on the game. But you can see right here, once again, I mean, that just, it's essentially like a pass. It's a run play with a pass that, uh, you know, gets gets your running back five yards ahead of the play. Let's go and do it one more time. Like I said, that pitch right there. 
got that out extra you know like i said sometimes we'll get some good animations sometimes we'll get some bad ones that result in fumbles so just be careful when it comes to the pitch sometimes it's better just to hold it with the uh, the quarterback and take the, the few yard loss next up we have the raven's power it's another good play uh, to almost treat like a stretch run as this is one of the better uh running formations in the uh in the book um, as you can see, we're just having a lot of success on these, you know, there, there's nothing really to the reach there. I didn't really run the play well at all, and I still got close to 10 yards. But this is going to be best against cover three and cover four off zones. Um, you can really run this inside or outside. Like there, I kind of made a poor read. It's an inside run, but if you read your blocker uh, kicks to the outside or has outside leverage, you can easily take this outside. As you can see right there, um, you know, you're really just reading those first pulling blocks. Whether they have, They're going to try for inside, but if they don't get it, a lot of times they'll have outside. Then you can just basically take it outside and treat it like a stretch run. Next up, we got the fade smash. It's just a really good cover to play. Just put the X route on a smoke, and you'll see how the B route here will just get outside of the cover too. And you can typically get a really good catch and run if you have enough of a speed advantage there. But you can see for the most part against cover two, if you put this smoke route out, there's just nothing that really covers it. And it's pretty instant too. As you can see, we get it right off the, the right off the right off the jump, or we can just take it for a sprint right up the field right away. You can even have success against cover two man, but in that scenario, you typically want to motion somebody across and put them on a streak so that the safety doesn't really get in the way. But you're going to see how the B route here, once again, it's just the type of route that it is. I don't know what it is, but it gets really good release. Uh, as you can see, Tyron Matthew never even touched him. He's one of the better man coverage cornerbacks slash safeties in the game. But we'll do that again. Like I said, with that type of release, if he doesn't get hands on him at all, I can just throw it right away. Next up, we have the Jet Touch Pass. This play is probably going to be best against cover three and cover four zones or man cover just because a lot of times there won't be anything out here uh, as far as a cornerback because the two receivers are on the other side. You obviously want to have your fastest receiver at this spot um, or your most most athletic, I should say, your most agile because um, this is, you know, it's all about once he gets outside here, we can just make a lot of, a lot of stuff happen. But the speed definitely helps you get to the edge. And then obviously the agility will help you with any one-on-one -on -one matchups you have at the end here. This is a really good play, by the way. I mean, this is the way that these, these blockers pull. Though there, I didn't use them very well. It's a very explosive play. Next up, we have the it's best used as a cover two play. You can see we motion this guy out, put the A route on a streak. And uh, LaMarcus Murray here will just have a really big lane. I mean, if I have a faster running back, he'll have even more space. But you can see how easy that play is uh, against cover two zone. Um, this is something where, um, you know, a faster running back is ideal, but, you know, this is the best thing that I have on this particular, this might be the best thing I have on this team right now. I mean, there's definitely the, you know, you can see this, this cornerback here doesn't even react. I mean, that's just a total fail as we get a really big play up to the outside. The cornerback doesn't even really seem to be watching that. Do the exact same setup. And the tight end here can be very, you know, get wide open up the seam. You can get bigger play as well. If I just leave him in the backfield, if I leave that running back in the backfield, a lot of times, if you have a real speedy tight end, a lot of times he'll be able to get going. But I don't think Andrews really has that speed. So it can be a one-play touchdown if you have a guy like Darren Waller or something like that. Otherwise, motioning this guy out is going to be best. Um, just to basically create that uh, that seam look there as you can see I mean if I have enough speed in any one of these scenarios I could probably be going against cover three Against man coverage Let's see what happens as this RB route Doesn't really have a ton of speed, but you can get behind linebackers as you can see right there That's something that um, not a huge speed advantage you can keep him in the backfield too. This is not something like right here. Now he's on a safety though, which is something that really makes it worthwhile to motion this guy out. Like I said, if you if you have a, a slower safety and a faster running back, you might be able to get away with that. But mostly you're going to want to run him back or motion him out because you can see how it isolates the linebacker, which is a matchup you're typically going to want. You have a guy like Alvin Kamara or something like that. I don't know what happened there. Is he just totally bit on the play? <laughs> So we're going to do that again. Like I said, you want to isolate this linebacker there. He was wide open. I don't know if it changed blitzes on me out of nowhere, but uh, it was pretty glitchy. So once again, like I said, we just float this up. Typically, he's going to get past that. The only real issue is I'm not really getting a great uh, throw from Lamar. That plus, like I said, I don't have a ton of speed. You can see it still worked out as we get a touchdown there. Next up, we got the power option. 
This play here, if there's no real extra defender out here, you can have a lot of success. Since I have Lamar Jackson running, you can see right there, I mean, I can have just, I can just steal yards uh, with him. But typically, the pitch is the play. Right here, once again, nothing really out here. Cover three, cover four, it's going to be best. There, he was chasing that running back the entire way. I should have just took it up the field with uh, Lamar. Here we go. We probably got to cover three again. So I'll make that pitch early. A lot of times the quarterback will turn to a blocker, but you can see if you get that pitch out nice and early, there's just no real reaction to the outside edge from cover three or cover four. Here it looks like we probably have that again. So I'll get that pitch out there again. So it's just a cheat code. I mean, you just get that ball out there, um, and you're making plays that you typically wouldn't. Next up, we have the stretch alert dragon. This play's probably best against cover three, the B route on the left side, and stretch on the right side. Although I probably want to move the ball back to the center because like I said I can have success on both sides here but the stretch and the under route are gonna have the most success as long as this fullback here gets a, gets out on that cornerback which would have been better but he got it on the safety but ultimately a good cover three and cover four play the uh, the B or the uh, the slants will have success on the goal line this is a really good goal line play to run against um, you know cover three and against man covers just because of the slant route um, will a lot of times um, you know have success against anybody who's doing a lot of man heavy man blitzing so we're gonna do this again like I said I ain't covered three typically that fullback will take out that cornerback and help you get to the edge for a pretty decent run next up we have the triple option it's another play we're gonna make sure you have a running back at the fullback spot so let's go and let's pick that Going against random defense again. If there's no defender on the outside here, it's going to be best to hold it with the quarterback and pitch it out to the running back. Although there, it didn't get out. For some reason, they have like delays on these uh, plays now. Here, if you have a spread alignment though, best just hold the A button, just go right up the middle, take as much as you can. Uh, or a lot of times, it's best to go to the outside as well, but I haven't seen that look yet. So here we go once again. Big spread alignment, right up the gut. I'm gonna take what I can. Although a lot of times, you can take this wide left and get bigger plays. Like I said, they're going to keep giving me that spread look because of the receivers. I'm just going to keep taking this. It's an easy five yards. Then when the, your opponent tries to close those gaps, that's when you're going to want to hit him to the outside. So right here, like I said, I can hold it, go to the outside. I don't know. what Frank Clark has like some suction uh, ability there. He's always catching me. But there we go. Nothing really outside. Like I said, I should be able to just take this wide. If I have a speed advantage anyway, I could take it wide and I get a very big play without even going up the middle there. So there's multiple looks that you can go to there. But if there's a huge hole right in front of you, obviously you're going to want to take it. Uh, it's an easy, consistent five-yard run, and then you force them to close it, then you can go outside with the same reads. Haven't really gone to the uh, this pitch side yet, so I'm going to force it here just so I can get it to that side, even though that was not a good look. Typically, you don't want to do it where there's a box safety or an extra fender of any kind, but you can see how you can have a lot of success even with that. So like I said, we'll do that once again. Like I said, extra box defender. Got to catch him in that uh, look where I can basically, you know, win that with the pitch. Uh, and you can still have success with it, but ultimately it's going to be best when there's no nothing really out there. Like right here, it's always going to make sense to go the opposite direction. It's just a better, uh, a much easier uh, road to, to get yardage. Next up, we got the stretch alert X looky. It's another really good goal line play. Best to run the ball against cover three and cover four. As you can see, the cornerbacks typically like to drop back and, you know, take themselves out of the play. If you're on the goal line, a man coverage um, is going to be a good look when it comes to, you know, just needing a couple of yards. I mean, that's, you know, if a lot of people like to run man blitzes at that scenario. There, I just threw it really early, and you can see how we're getting success. So, you know, we can score easy touchdowns with the stretch alert. That's looky play. And then against cover three, cover four, you're going to want to run the ball to uh, the stretch, which you can see right there. You want the safety in the box. That additional safety in the box, and it still didn't matter. Next up, we got the triple option switch. So another play, this play here, the dive is probably the lesser of the of the play. I mean, you can if you have a hole right in front of you, you can take the dive. It's going to be the safest. But I'm typically looking for outside contain, and then I can just flip this out. The quarterback will typically become a blocker as well. Uh, but the flip is really where it's at on this particular play. It's not where it's at on some of the other plays, but in this particular play, it is here. Like I said, I don't want to run this with that extra safety in the box. It's going to be a scenario where I want to change that, um, and that's something that I can't really get away from. So this is something I would switch to a different play entirely, probably the counter. Let's do this without that safety in the box, but that's really what makes this play special. And I can hold on to this. If I have a guy like Lamar Jackson, you can see I can hold on to this ball all day long and get a big play. But the flip is typically going to be where the ball goes probably half the time because a lot of times, I mean, they're like crashing in here. 
uh, but you can see nothing's out here. So I'm just going to hold it with Lamar, and we're just going to have a very big play. Uh, as you can see, they just react very poorly. If you if you read the beginning of this play well, there's just some really you know poor reactions. So like right, right here, we have nothing on the strong side, no extra defender. If we have no extra defender on the strong side, we're typically going to have a lot of success. Here they actually reacted pretty well after the fact, that I can just flip it out. Um, which to me, like I said, the flip's probably the most consistent play, but you can also get in trouble with the flip. Here we're running, even with this extra safety in the box, we'll run it. Uh, you can see, like I said, that's the only time you don't want to run it is when there's an extra defender. Here we have like a cover two. This is a perfect look for that. I can hold this for a long time. Like I said, because I have a lot of speed, I can keep it. If my running back's faster, I can typically pitch it to the running back, but there's a lot of really good plays to be had here. Next up, we have the triple option. This play here is going to be very critical that you put a um, an actual running back at the fullback spot. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to do that. So this play is going to be best to just hold A and hand it off to the running back coming around there. He kind of got off the block. I guess I got a little too close to Clark. But that's going to be the best look. Like right here, you got to cover through safety in the box. You're typically not going to want to run it towards that look because it's definitely stacked. So that's going to be one of the scenarios where you're definitely going to want to run it away. But it's really just a box count. Like right here, once again, got a guy on the outside shoulder of the outside linebacker. I'm not going to go in that direction. We're going to go ahead. We're going to try to run it in the opposite direction. Here we go once again. I'm going to try to go the opposite way just to show that that is an option. You can see sometimes you'll get some really good pitch animations that can bail you depending on who your quarterback is. Right there, that was kind of a late pitch. But uh, that's, it's gonna, the best results are going to be had by just basically holding the A button and just getting around to the left side. That's going to be the most consistent part of the play. Here, like I said, I can take this. If I have a real speed back, I can go all the way outside. Uh, as you can see, we can have a lot of success. I mean, you're going to get some one-on-one -on -one looks with this particular play. That's why you need to make sure you have a fast running back at that spot because that's the best spot. Go ahead, we'll do it one more time. I said, if you just have a little speed advantage to the edge, you can typically have a really big play. Next up, we have the halfback zone weak. This play is, if you have a hole right in front of the uh, the guard there, that fullback does a terrific job of typically opening up the next level of blocking. I find this play is best to kind of be run uh, wide, although here it looks like we probably have a blitz. I'd probably switch over to a different run play here, but ultimately, um, you know, this is a very good run play that can be treated like an inside zone and also convert kind of like to a stretch play. So right here, nothing in front of the, you know, the guard. So, you, you know, that, that fullback just does an excellent job of just filling that hole and busting you to the next level. It's really easy to hear those, you know, the blitz and safety is not going to deter me because I'll probably run right past them. And then you can see how we're just having success uh, right up the gut. Typically, it's an up the gut run towards the left. But like I said, you can take this outside uh, once you get through to that first area. Like I said right there, you can see that's not even a fullback running that. And he's having a lot of success taking on that lead block to that linebacker. Next up, we have the PA boot slide. Against man or zone, just put the A route on a streak. And the B route will typically get open against pretty much any zone coverage uh, where the, uh, the A route's really there just to pull back coverage. You could also uh, motion this guy in and put him on a drag. I find that's going to be the best way to run this. The fullback at this point though is pretty irrelevant. You don't really need him anymore because this is going to be um, that's going to be your your crossing check down. Or you can just motion him in, and now you have a little bit better two levels of passing. Although I find it's probably best to put the X route on an in route and smart route him so that you have um, you know it's just better as far as layers and it's a better check down against man as you can see right there. It's also you know going to be best. Next up we have the PA tight end slide. play is going to be best against uh, cover three and cover four zone because this guy here is going to get open underneath those off coverages pretty easily. Like I said, that's something I can just get. They follow the streak back pretty much immediately and just leave the underneath zones wide open. The A route is going to be best against man and the B route will also be another cover three play, although ultimately I can feel like you can just leave him back against cover two zone. Can motion him across and put him on a streak and the uh, the b route or the x route here rather i should say will have a lot of success outside because of the um because of the flat setup i also want to typically run from the open side of the field but you can see it doesn't really matter so I motion him across put him on a streak cancel the play action pretty quickly and the x route here just bullet past the outside and the x route is going to have a very big play against cover two zone Except out of the pistol, we got the post shot. 
I mean, the, the, the check downs are really good, but ultimately this is the much better play, motioning this guy in and, and you know, bombing it up over the top. But uh, if you don't have that, just remember you do have your check downs. And like I said, I mean, I, I might not have the separation I would have had Hollywood Brown running it, but you can see it's behind the coverage. The crossers will get open against just about anything, man or zone. You just have to take, uh, you know, take whichever one gets open first, I guess, is the easiest way to say it. If you really want to hold those safeties down, you can put the A route on a pass block also. And I like to roll in the direction of the throw. And as you can see right here, we're just getting, or we're getting past it, even if I'm not catching it. Like I said, Hollywood Brown would be even easier. Except we got the PA comebacks. It's another cover three, one play touchdown on old gen consoles. Against cover three, you have to run this from the hash mark to the open side of the field, bring this receiver in and put him on a fade. You have to wait till that receiver passes 35 yards before you throw the ball or you will not be able to pass lead which is ultimately what you need to make this play work. As you can see right there, it gets past the uh, the safety. It wasn't the best throw, kind of slowed down. But just to watch the, I'm gonna watch the replay real quick, just to see what you're looking for as far as the cornerback goes. I mean, he will slow down at about, you know, halfway there. And then at this point, you still have to wait till he passes 35 yards before you get the ball out of the quarterback's hands or else you will not be able to pass it. I'll show you that in a second. Although there, that was pretty close. That must've been bang, bang. Because yeah, it's leaving my hand right at the thirty at the thirty-four, so who knows? Maybe it's maybe it's the thirty-four yard mark, but still wait till it gets to thirty-five yards before you try to throw it. If you do that early, you'll see this will be the result. I'll go ahead and I'll throw the ball early and try to pass lead. And right there he was just getting covered up. Like I said, that is too early, and you can see it's just a jump ball at that point. You can't pass lead outside beyond before that point. Except we have the PA comebacks. Play here. I'm just gonna put the B route on a drag. You have a comeback on the other side, which is a good check down against man. The B route's good against man too. But if I cancel this play action, I can immediately flip it out to this guy in the flat a lot of times. Although there, that was actually a throw. A lot of times you'll get a pitch animation. So let's do that again. Like I said, you can just get this pitch, and then you get a lot of times you get a really good catch and run because the, you already have the momentum there. So if you watch that, that's something I use that a lot in a goal line set. Treat it almost like a. Uh, a halfback pass or um, a halfback shovel pass, but you can see right there. A lot of times, it'll come in to, to block as well, so you won't always have that option. But that check and release can be a really good play if you notice he's going out of the flats right away. Just basically throw it to him, uh, get it out to him. Like I said, a lot of times you get a pitch, which is better for um, you know for acceleration. Let's go let's do the again. Like I said, you got to cancel that play action, and they can get that pitch. And then you know it's just something that's going to confuse your opponent. They're not going to be used to seeing what they're going to think is a run play uh, in something like that. As you can here, here, like I said, you get that pitch once again. The defenders aren't even turning around. I'm just gone. I'm just on the sideline here with a huge play. So like I said, that's a really glitchy play. It's one of my more favorite plays in this playbook. Except we have the PA crossers. So let's play here. You can box this guy in. You can just leave it as is. Uh, you'll have a number of good crossing options, especially against man covers like we have here. Uh, we're going to have a lot of success, but ultimately you can have success against man or zone with those crossing options. The... Um, you know, you're basically just going high, low, one of the two based off the depth of the cornerbacks will typically be open. But when you bring them across like this, that's when you get the biggest advantage because, or when you bring the receiver in, it's where you get the biggest advantage because he crosses underneath the tight end uh, quicker and it'll get open a lot faster. Next up, we got the jet touch pass. This is something that uh, typically to me is gonna be best run against cover three cover four and man coverages although i mean i'm not even sure what defense i'm running against right now and i'm still gonna have success because you know you could you have an opportunity to get your fastest receiver the ball on a play like this i just know the cover three cover four and man coverages will typically work best because the man coverage corner doesn't cross with the receiver like it typically does if you do a pre-snap and the cover three and cover four cornerbacks drop back immediately so both things give you an advantage when running a play like this next up we got the triple option This play here, if I have my choice, I want to run it behind the tight end, but there, there's an extra defender, so I'll hold it, flip it out last second to the uh, the pitch back on the other side. That's really all you're looking for is which side has the edge, you know, which which side you have the the edge to. Like right here, don't really have the edge. I want to go to the fullback side, but based off the or the tight end side, based on the fact that that guy has the outside shoulder of the tight end, he's going to shut that down. 
So I'm pretty much here once again, like I said, I don't have to go to the pitch side. Anytime that I have the advantage over here, this is going to be the side that I take it. You can keep with the quarterback, although there I probably should have put a little bit more juke, a little more polish on it. But this particular formation I'm in, I don't think I'm ever going to have that outside edge, so I'll just force it and take it take it wide because that to me is the better play, holding the A button. And it's just a more, it's a more sure thing because the pitch on the other side can be an issue. You might not have Lamar Jackson, the quarterback, which could be an issue. So all these things combined really makes it to me best to just hold the A button nine times out of 10. Next up we have the 01 trap. This play is gonna work best against uh, widespread uh, defensive alignments. Uh, especially obviously over the middle now here you can take it outside like if you have a tightly packed defensive uh, formation like that um, obviously it's going to be an inside to outside read next up we have the halfback inside zone it's another play from this formation where essentially um, you know it's the best inside run in the formation there's no real reads needed um, except you know you just want to make sure that you have a little bit of a gap to the left side but this plus play here does a pretty good job of blowing open holes these inside zone runs are definitely some of the most consistent men 22 and it works really well with the stretch play so like here i could easily switch over to the stretch play because there's not necessarily a gap or i could just run this and try to take it outside uh, but without a doubt this is if you have spacing if you have gaps which a lot of defenses have some defensive have more than others uh, you can see how you can really have a lot of success uh and you know just get to the next level like that there that, uh, that guard typically will try to get to that second level. He did a pretty good job there. Let's watch the replay. Early on, it didn't look like this guard was going to peel off. If I can get over here real quick. Um, all right, whatever. But, yeah, so you can see he starts off with the double team. These inside zones they typically start off with a double team, and then they get to the next level, which is why I ran directly at him before peeling outside because I wanted to make sure that he sealed that block so that I would have that space. Next up, we have the PA tight end seam. Pretty much just want to drag the B route. If you want to, you can drag the RB route and give yourself an extra blocker. It really doesn't matter. But ultimately, those two routes will get open against just about anything. You're really going front to back here. You're really going to look from the short route to the, the mid route and then to the deepest route, which is the comeback, which you can see right there. I had a, a lot of success with here. We've got a man zero blitz. The comeback is going to beat that. As I, I, I don't know what happened there. I guess I made a bad adjustment after I threw the ball. But you can see against man or zone, it's really much pretty much the same read you're just pretty much reading the drag to the crosser to the comeback route and one of those three should be open just about every single time here probably should have threw that a little bit earlier but you can see it's just a front to back read really easy next up we have the pa x burst cross it's another play that's good against random plays i'm just going to put the b route here on a streak the a route on a drag and it's pretty much you know reading front to back if the running back's open here in the flat i'm going to take that that's typical of a cover three or a cover four but i'm really working my way from front to back i'm really working from the running back to the drag to the a route the b route is really just there to pull coverage this is pretty much going to be all that i uh, that i do here and you can see like i said somebody's always going to be open right there that was probably the most safe route it took me a little while to decipher because I thought that the deep route was going to be there but ultimately something will be here uh, when it comes to all these particular plays you can see right here that was probably a man coverage but I think the my, my controller was on the linebacker I got to be better about being on a defensive tackle with this remote just so I don't necessarily uh, run into those problems let's go through that one more time I said that one there probably wasn't too indicative of what I was going to be looking at. They said right here, there's three levels crossing. One of them will be open every single time. The spacing is pretty impossible for any defense to take away. Next up, we have the PA X burst cross. It's another cover three one play touchdown on old gen consoles. You have to run this from a hash mark and you have to run it to the open side of the field. So I'm just going to motion in the X route here and put him on a streak. Then I'm going to put the B route on a streak. I'm going to block the running back and slide my protection to the left. That's all I really have to do. Then I'm just waiting for this X route to cross 35 yards so I can pass lead him away from the safety. As you can see right there, it gets past, although that wasn't necessarily the best catching animation. We'll go ahead and we'll do that again. The, um, you know, as far as... I'll put the... Or I'll put the um, the B round of streak and I put the RB round to drag for a check down. As far as the blocking adjustments, that's that's not really mandatory for the play to work. I'm just doing that because I find that it works best to double team. Number one, their best pass rusher, but number two, I like to roll in the direction of the throw. And then you can see right there, we get a great pass lead as we get the touchdown that time. So you can see it's a very easy one play touchdown as long as it's set up correctly. And you have to watch this guy here, watch. Number one, you got to watch for that cornerback to stop running, which he will. Number two, you have to wait for him to pass 35 yards, which is right about here. 
So once he does that, I'm probably already throwing. I guess it's it's somewhere, maybe it's not 35 yards, maybe it's closer to 30. As you can see, the ball was out of my hand before the receiver reached that amount, but maybe it's 35 yards away from the quarterback. I'm not 100% sure, so the fact that I'm dropped back might be part of the reason why it worked. Next up, we have the stretch alert looky. This is a very good goal line play. This is a very good goal line play as a lot of people like to come out in uh, man coverage look so against man coverage this is going to be a really good route i mean you could easily get five yards this is a cover three i'm going against right now and still having a lot of success the cover three however is also uh you know cover three cover four the running back is going to be one of the better plays as you can see i mean there's typically nothing out here the cornerbacks drop back in those scenarios and cover three and cover four off zones you can also control the formation by motioning this guy out and you can see the the defense shifts away from the direction i'm going and it would also help to get um, you know that cornerback a lot of times. As you can see, I feel it's best to leave the tight end in. You have the option, if you want to, to motion the formation because this offensive formation um, is really what controls the defense, as odd as that sounds. This formation here, because of the three tight end set and the offset, basically shifts the forcefully shifts the defense to a line in that direction. Next up, we have the tight end attack. This play here, just coming up with the B route on an in route. You can block the running back if you want to, although he has a pretty good check down. All you're going to do is read the shortest routes to the deepest routes once again. The A route, the B route, all the, uh, you know, the crossing routes are pretty much the two reads. They just uh, separate at a little bit of a different timing than some of the plays from this formation. But ultimately, it gives you a really good um, level, a series of levels of passing from short to deep. And you can see, you can get some pretty big plays with this play on offense. Next up, we got the counter weak. This play here is another good play if they're over shifting to the strong side or if you're just seeing a lot of spacing along the defensive front. Tighter pack defenses will do worse. On this play, you also want to make sure that the yeah, a good look would be where the defensive end or the outside linebacker is outside of the guard because, or outside of the tackle or outside of the box, I should say, because typically that will take him out of the play and then the pulling guard or uh, fullback will take him out. But something like this, when it's tight against the line, probably not the best play to run against whenever you have that tightly packed defensive alignment and outside leverage. Or you have an extra defender, like right here, you have an extra box defender. This is not going to be a good play against pretty much any of these defenses. Next up, we got the fullback dive. This player is just a very good short yards run. I typically want to put a running back at the fullback position, though. I mean, unless you only have to get a couple of yards and you have a, a running a fullback that's actually a pretty good running back. But uh, ultimately, you know, it's a very quick handoff. You're going to get uh, a lot of short yards just based off acceleration alone. Uh, I also find this play here kind of works to the left. If you try to if you try to follow the diagram and run it straight up the middle, you kind of lose your momentum and lose that angle. I think it's best to just kind of run to the left, and it's going to be the, the the most obvious hole, uh, or at least at the very at the very least you'll have the most accelerations. You can see we're getting more and more as we pretty much just follow that pattern. If you try to fight that pattern, it's going to you know you're just going to lose all your momentum and get stuffed. Next up, we got the halfback toss. This play right here is another good outside run. Probably going to be best against cover three and cover four uh, zone coverages where the cornerbacks drop back. As you can see right there, I kind of lost all my momentum uh, jumping over that blocker. But you can see right here, I mean, this is just, I don't even know what coverage that was. Get close to 10 yards. This is a very good uh, blocking uh, toss play. Toss plays are definitely back in a big way in, uh, in Madden 22. As you can see, I mean, the blocking just sets up perfectly. They do a great job of getting outside. Next up, we got the PA Power O. This really is successful against just about any zone coverage, but it'll probably be best against cover two. Um, as you can see, the drag's a good check down there. That was probably cover four quarters, but mostly any non-matching, I shouldn't say. I shouldn't say it works against any zone coverage. I should say it works against any, like I said, right here we have that cover two. You can see, I want my best tight end out there because that's the money route, the corner route. But ultimately, I have my probably a much, I want Darren Waller to be there, essentially. But ultimately, I'm playing the fullback versus, that's cover three right there, fullback versus um, the tight end in the, in, you know, the outside. That's pretty much all there is to it when it comes to zone coverages. So streaking the A route only really draws the coverage back. Your drag is going to be pretty much your only man beater. There we got that cover four again, but I can still catch it in front of the guy. But yeah, I mean, against cover four, you treat that like a, like a man coverage. Cover four quarters would ultimately be a man coverage play. And this is just a good play to mix in because you can see how you have a lot of really overpowered run plays with this formation. So you have a good passing option if your opponent's playing the run too heavy. Next up, we have the PA sprint halfback flat. 
It's another good play against any zone coverage on the right side to streak the A route. The B route will typically get open. Either the running back or the B route will get open. Those are typically going to be your reads. If it's something in the flat right there, I guess I could take that and turn up for a catch and run. Uh, but it's typically going to be the tight end. You have a good man beater in the X route as well. That'll be your man beater check down if you get a man coverage. But like I said, it's pretty much going to be about this tight end and the running back against any zone. And then you have your 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 crosser for any uh, any man coverage, which I don't know if I'll actually see. You might just take my word for it. But the crosser is still a pretty good play regardless. You can see even against zone coverage. That was man coverage. So there you go. You got your man beater there. And then your other side's all about zone beaters. Next up, we have the power alert X smoke. So this play right here, I mean, if it's a cover three or cover four, you can throw it to the smoke route because the cornerbacks drop back. But against everything else, you're pretty much going to have to run the power run. This is a decent run. I don't find um, I would choose this for just this run. I mean, it's a good it's a good run play. But ultimately, out of the runs in this formation, it's probably like the third or the fourth best. Um, and, I mean, given the fact that you have a, uh, a, a smoke screen as well is pretty good. But you can see, I mean, obviously the blocking is pretty good. This is one of the better running formations in the entire game. I put this out from the Raiders playbook already. Um, and it's something that, you know, like I said, if you make a poor read when it comes to that uh, that underneath throw, it can be it could be a disaster, as you can see right there. It has to be a cover three or a cover four where the cornerback drops back. If they come down at all, which is a typical of man coverage, and cover four quarters, you can very easily get intercepted or just get tackled for a loss. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.